All right. Buddy in the stream. Let's see. Chat, give me the heads up here, fellas. You are watching the LCS Rundown Community Games, the best of threes from the best of the LCS this past season. Is that better? You are watching the LCS Rundown Community Games. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta turn down my mic. Hold on, hold on. Different fucking stream. There we go. There we go. We are good to go. Yes. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The first game of the T Force community LCS rundown challenges. It will be the NA Finals. Team comps on the blue side. We have. The team comp of Team Solo Mid. Uh, nobody's locked in yet, so I don't know what everybody's going to be playing. But the team comp will be Nar, Nidalee, Oriana, Kogma, and Janna. And on the blue side, or sorry, the purple side, I guess, we have Yasuo, Gragas, Victor, Tristana, and Braum. The team comp of One Faithful CLG. Game 1 going to be getting underway here soon. 40 seconds left for them to lock in their blind picks. Why is it? No, I guess it's blind pick. It doesn't really matter. Everybody knows what they're playing. Sure. I can't see chat at the moment, so I'm just going to try and get that up. There we go. Okay. Can you hear? I'm, I'm sorry. That was loud. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game one. Picks getting locked in here. I'm actually going to open up chat. How do I open up oh, chat? Here we go. Aha. Chat. Pop out. And boom goes the dynamite, everybody. Oh god. Oh, there we go. Everything just uh Everything slightly went away there. We are good now. Two minutes, 25 seconds left on the delay. What will happen in the early game? Will Mott, the new Dyrus, give up first blood? Will Santana, as Tristana, carry like Double Lift always tries to? We will find out this and more coming up in just a few moments here on the LCS Rundown Community Games. God, solo casting's awkward. Um, oh, jeez. I don't know what... To, oh, my God. Let's get some analysts going in here. Hey, well, we got a good team cop here from the DSM side, that being the blue side. Uh, 
very heavy protect the Kog'Maw style of composition. Meanwhile, on the purple side, Morbid all did composition with the Yashuo and Victor in the solo lanes. Tristana for that huge late game damage. And of course, the Gragas for the early game pressure. This, uh, this is going to be interesting, however, because we are on a completely different patch from when this game was played. So most of these champions are uh, completely changed from how they were in their games. So, Sean, I love the support. I'm not doing that well, if I'm honest. I'm running out of things to say and we haven't started the game yet. I mean, hey. You know, coming into game one here, I feel like it'll be a lot of uh, feeling each other out. You know, this is a best of three. So, I mean, the teams will have to get to know each Well, that's a good point. I mean, the blue team here, never having played together, will have to learn how to synergize. But you could say the same for the purple side. I'm, I'm going into split personality at this point. I really could use a co-caster, if I'm honest. You can tell the future. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Or you read it here first. Early game pressure coming out of Team Solo mid as we load into the game. Hopefully. Oh, why is that the get rid of that? There we go. Um... If you want to join, uh, I'm actually in TeamSpeak right now. I'm in uh, the Rocket League uh, channel, I think, of the TeamSpeak group. So if you want to join in there and hop on in, that would be great. No, hold on. Do we have game? Do we have game? There it is, ladies and gentlemen. First time loading in to game number one. So I guess we'll go through the rosters as they do. Starting in the top lane, the host of the LCS rundown, playing Gnar, it's Machinorum at 80 carry, playing Kogma, it's Sean Jiggly Duffy. Playing support, Jenna, a champion I haven't seen in months because I don't play the game, it's Alfredus. Playing mid lane with the Winter Wonder Oriana skin, it's BD Blake! Uh, In-game in name's Megalithon, I don't know. And coming out of the jungle, playing Italy, it's Vong. And on the red side, playing AD Carry. Sporting the new Dragon Trainer Tristana, which was not available when this game happened, it's Santana. Playing mid as Victor, it's Wale. In the top lane, as Yasuo, it'll be Ander. Playing support, Jato Wiggins. And coming out of the jungle, it's Grant Odin Kill. Claws going off in my head. Timing seems about well. right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Going to the game number one. Actually, I'm still wearing the 3D glasses from the draft that I don't need to be wearing. My goodness. All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number one. I'm going to be using... Uh, Automated camera because I'm not very good at that. Oh, war coming into the back door. We get slowed. I'm gonna take a lot of damage. Thirty seconds to minions. We'll have some time though. As you can see, kind of a normal start coming in. Yeah, so we're in the top lane. Norm here. Scouting around blue box. Looks like a normal opener here though from both Minions sides. Minions have spawned. Of course, the purple team. Red team. Being the team comp of CLG. 
from this year's NA LCS finals. The game's very loud right now. Sound. Sorry, I'm still playing with headphones. That should be better. Well, early game start here. We'll be starting off. On the ground. On the ground. Golems. Double golems here. Farming. Already starting to play place. My goodness, is Machinorm getting out farmed? I just want to watch this for a bit. Look at this. One CS so far, yeah. Machinorm. There it is. He gets a second CS, ladies and gentlemen. Number three. Level two with three CS. Some really great aggression here from Andrew. Automated camera jumping all over the place. Sean should stop giving feedback and play the game a little bit. It's pretty important. You are in carry. Learning how to CS. Like a pro. Pot taking a lot of early game damage. He does have his two biscuits, though. And this camera just decided to jump all over the place. Meganon coming out there. We'll be backing off on the aggression. Brought out by the Yasuo. Very strong early game gold lead here for uh, CLG as they seem to be out farming TSM quite heavily. This early game pressure of this team. You know, having the victor, the Tristan of Ron bot lane. Brings out a lot more pressure and seems to be working for them as they have opened up with like a 400. 500 gold lead at the four minute mark. It'll be interesting to see how these teams build building into the later game, as there are some new items in the game. I'm not sure exactly what the rules are, but a lot of damage being taken from Santana there. Having to jump back. A lot of damage given up to the CLG bot lane there, so they will have to. Back off for the time being. Meanwhile, Bob getting caught out, and first blood goes over to Wally. Damn, here. Yeah. And that is just not good news from Up and Arm. Now the double buff Victor can just punish this Oriana for the next three minutes. So he will have unlimited mana and that enhanced auto attack from his E. And he'll be doing a lot of damage with that red buff. On a lot of low health. He goes in for an early dive here. Forcing a flash on his own aggression. Great play there for Machinorm. Really showing he has some focus. And oh my goodness. What was that? Machinorm living with less than 25 HP. As Ander tried to go for the tower dive. But lost it. He missed the knock up on his last breath. He could not get that off. And oh man. Oh, he doesn't even have last breath. Wow. Really tr stepping up too hard there. That could be some miscarrying of. Uh, miscarrying? Hmm. I don't think I meant miscarrying. Misjudging your own damage there. Trying for some early game aggression that did not work out. In a lane, he was winning quite easily. Oh man, here we go. Here comes the red buff auto attack. Oh, Machinorm stands right in the laser! And he will go down. An easy kill there for Wally. The CLG picks up another kill and enhances their gold lead to 1.2k. Man, this is not looking good for TSM here. The only part of their comp that is going well is this Kog'Ma, which was, does seem to be the focus of their strategy here. So that is a good thing working out for them. Of course, the new Kog'Maw, different from the old Kog'Maw, that W can turn out to be quite deadly if 
CLG cannot get on top of that card line. With that enhanced range and the absolutely bonkers amount of attack speed. He's going for it here. He's really deaf. Going for a lot of pressure. CTN is very low. Now, how do I get rid of this thing again? I forget. I gotta go over the... But we can see, look at all this gold that Rally's on. He has not backed yet once. Still over. It's almost 1.4k over Makanara, but here we go. Execute. A lot of pressure. Wait a minute! Makanara gets executed! Makanara oh. doesn't get executed, sorry. Why do I keep saying Makanara's in the mid lane? He is not. It's Megalithon. It's BD Blade. Man, this game is not looking good for the side of TSM here. I know! I just realized that as well! <laughs> I'm drunk, apparently, as it turns out, ladies and gentlemen. Playing so badly that I just thought he was two different players that were both playing terribly. Not something to happen every day, but it does in the LCS community! Replay games or whatever we're calling this. Now, I need to remember the hotkeys to get rid of this and bring up the team fight mode, so I'm actually gonna look at this in a second. Um, manual camera is that. Okay. Um. You think they would have this very clearly labeled? It's to get into team fight right here. There we go. Target spectator HUD. That's H. I can get rid of that. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm learning here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Margle scoreboard items. Can I do X? I'll do that. Okay. Team fight UI. So I need to do H and A at the same time here to get into that. There we go. There we go. Nope, here we go. In the bot lane, a lot of aggression. Santana taking a lot of damage. The exhaust being burned there. Meanwhile, Yoda Willings will go down. Kill in the bot lane for the Janna, unfortunately. But the assist points will be nice there. Meanwhile, loading kill coming up. Missing the body slam. That's crucial. That gank will no longer succeed. Warm up time. So we should be getting into the games here. Oh, damage. oh and a teleport down from Ander. He's going to be missing his flow, though. Perfect. Having a knockup on his Q would be crucial. You know, Odin is still up in the top lane due to his absence. Staying down here for a long time, seeing if they can push down the turret. Maybe. This camera is all over the place, guys. It knows it's predictive. Odin kill taking a lot of damage. Forcing the barrel out. You're missing the boomerang. But, will Wally get the kill? He dies. Forcing the ult down. Not getting stuck in the- Why isn't he moving his ult? Why is his ult not moving? There it goes! It's on him, but it does almost no damage. Oh, more double buffs, though, for Wally. He oh, man, this is getting scary, ladies and gentlemen. This victor is running rampant. No way would Pobelter be this effective in a game as a CLG member. Let's be realistic here. Going in. On one tower does go down. Seems like they must be poking back and forth with each other. Yeah. Still staying in mid lane. Top and Mott, Ganorm, what? It's Megalithon! I keep saying it's Mott! It's not Mott! I'm sorry. I see M's and I just put that in my head. Blake getting destroyed there. Man, the plays coming out of Ander. And this, this gold lead is getting out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. 
almost three and a half thousand gold to head for CLG on the purple side. Of course, TSM team count for me anyway. Championships on the blue side. Starting to see the build orders come in. Of course, the static ship first for Yasuo up in the top lane. See, the, the thing with these camera controls are they don't want to seem to work with really specific players, so. Oh god, we're missing a lot of action here. Uh, it will go down. Securing the kill with that punch. A red buff for himself could be nice. Going up against the Gospel. Meanwhile, the gold numbers here. A lot of gold on the Kogma, actually, sitting at 1500. Could go back for that BF sword. Of course, when they played this game on this patch, this would have been enough for a BF sword, but now he's had it for almost 300 gold, so. That's a couple things we have to look out for. Of course, this new Kogma, this new W. Another thing we have to look out for. Well, you gotta keep auto attacking there, buddy. Blake, buddy, you've had better days. Well, it looks like, uh, LG going to be going for a dragon here. They do have the vision secured around. I do see it going down. Very good from them. And oh man. Akimaru losing out on that red buff. Bring it over to the Asuo. Not going to be a good time for him. One push here coming down. 3 to 7 on the kill scores. 18,000 gold to 21 and a half. I'm not going to kill the CLG players. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. And while they channeling their pole belter, Zion Spartan, now Darshan, for some reason, because his teachers, I guess, no longer call him Zion Spartan. Santana jumping right on in and blows up Valve there on the Nidalee. This is not going well. This game is... Oh wow, a nice knock up there though by Alcatraz. Drag Assault does come down. Body Slam misses though. They will be forced back out of it. Only kill dropped very low. Meanwhile, Jiggly Duff taking a lot of damage here from Santana. Santana get trapped under the tower. He will go down to the tower shots. A lot of damage taking out. Jiggly Duff on no mana though, so he cannot. See oh, he pops the W. One more auto attack on he flashes forward, gonna get the kill on to Oda Kill and Mont Norm cleans up Braum. Jack Willingtons. Jono Wiggins. I'll get his name right, probably. A lot of good plays coming out from the TSM side here. Could be mounting somewhat of a combat. They have brought the back the gold beam slightly back. We'll be taking this tower here as well. That huge attack speed from Kogma. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. As I already missed. Oops, I pinged. I'm sorry, I pinged. I'm already missing the. Toggle spectator, toggle scoreboard. Shut down. Oh man, I'm missing kills here. Wow. Three man gank in the mid lane does take down Wally. And that's a good amount of shutdown gold there onto the Italy, unfortunately, instead of Blake. But hey. Hasaki! Trying to get some vision out. Forcing the ult back. Of course, the rev up on the Janner. Not the best thing in the world. Santana jumping in now. Really Duff will go down. Jumps forward again. Ult's back, Valve, though. And will be taking a lot of damage from that. 
that Kog'Maw passive. That does do quite a bit. Not too good on the health side here for CLG, though. As Nessel and Tristan up both on quite a bit of a little kill now running away. Man, Janna just securing all of those kills as I'm missing them because I'm terrible at camera work, ladies and gentlemen. Can I go back to directed camera, please? There we go. Sorry, I guess I hit the top of the floor. Still, look at the gold lead here. Almost 100 CS difference between the mid laners. Almost 3,000 gold. In fact, it is just over 3,000 gold difference in the mid laners alone. So, that's uh, it's not looking too great here for... TSM, and uh, most of their gold is on their jungler and their support, which isn't that great. But Watt does have quite a few kills under his belt. He's still almost 1,700 gold behind Ender in uh, lane there. He is possibly half the CS down. So, just going to show how important CS numbers are here, the, uh, the kill score is actually very close now, 8 to 9, but the team of TSM not CSing at their best. So they are behind Ender, has his top up available, he uses it to flash out from Mont Gadiris there. Oh no, Mont, you've been caught, sir. The gotcha in chat was unnecessary. And you will be going down. Santana jumping away from the whirlwind quite nicely there. Can I get rid of chat? Can I do that? There we go. Now it's out of the vision. Getting caught in. Shockwave does go down. He's bursted down by Bomb. Really, oh wow, the Odin killed Drag Assault there. Did a lot of damage to no one. As Alphagrams all just barely survived. Such little help on the side of TSM here. Let's see if we continue. Run down. A nice pick off there with the laser onto Bomb. In Italy, the single tower will go down. And we will be seeing Dragon come up in the next 10 seconds here. Let's take away that jungle. Nice fresh red buff for Santana. And a nice Dragon number two for Team CLG. Jigalina finds Odin kill though, does a bit more damage on him. But will get slowed by the barrel. This could delay the Dragon attempt here from CLG. As they would win this fight very easily. The vision does come out from Janna. They see the dragons available. They see it's up. The Twin Shadows item that isn't in the game anymore. I don't know, it's not called Twin Shadows. See now, Santina pokes at the dragon, pulling it out of the pit. Wow, from the top one, clearing out that nice wave that Mont had pushing. Tower. Wow. They're not full health bars, but they will secure the dragon, but they will lose their lives. A double kill there for Blake coming in on the Oriana. He's starting to pick it back up here. He's still way down in gold compared to his lane opponent, but he is starting to catch back up in comparison to everybody else. Of course, Victor Wally there is miles ahead of anybody else in this game. But the fact that he is in the side lanes pushing is not good for his team. He's effectively 10,000 gold that the team does not have. As I'm saying that, of course, he easily picks up an arm. Uh, it'll go down. Another kill looks like they're coming up here. As Janna caught out on the wrong side of the map. Will be picked up here eventually by Gasuo. And will the kill be secured by... Oh. Ander will take that kill, getting some more gold onto that Yasuo. So these, these two from 
Team CLG are certainly a key point here. Oh, he's not taking a lot of damage, though. He's flashing on the wrong side of the map. He's going to take another pounce here from Nidalee. Oh, he doesn't get far enough away, and he will go down there. Man, an exciting game here going on, and I'm almost out of breath. I'm, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out, ladies and gentlemen. Again, taking a look at the CS numbers here, only Jiggly Duff is besting his CLG sided no. opponent by almost 30 CS. He's not doing a bad job. He's going for a very weird build on this patch. Runon's Hurricane. And what is this item called? Oh, yes, it's Jinsu's Rage Blade, ladies and gentlemen. The item that was not around, it was not relevant on the patch that this game is played, but not anymore. This is Season 6 preseason. Ginsu's Rage Blade is the best blade. Look at that attack speed. Coming down on Jiggly Duff. Lots of damage going down. Ander will go down for free here. And the chase could continue on to St. Dana. A nice dodge on the spear. A rocket jump away will be enough. Hopefully, his middle is very quick. But missing that spear and the use of the Tristana all the way. Nice way to get away. Braum coming in for the reinforcements. Braum ultimate missing completely, but Janna will still go down. Zinkan aggressively flashing forward a nice crit there. Using the rapid fire cannon to get that nice crit off. On oh, the jiggly drop. Excuse me while I take a drink, everybody. I've actually died. And we will see Oda kill get taken down. And then immediately flashed away. I literally. Meanwhile, oh Wally. You are just too powerful, sir. The heal being forced out, but it will not be a lot. A solo 2v1 there for Wally, and he will grab this inhibitor tower as well. That man is too dead. Now, Mont is still in the top lane, trying to teleport away. He gets interrupted by Ander, who was literally right there within his vision the entire time. Not the best teleport if I've ever seen one. While Wally picking off that inhibitor by himself as nobody is left to defend. Santana and Shoto takes down the inner bottom tier tower. Andrew pushing top lane, inner tower. This is not going well for TSM here. The kill count would say otherwise, but the goal difference, the CS difference, the structure difference is what is killing them here. The objective play is too strong coming out of CLG and uh, Wally Kingdom here. And though has given up on life, he will fall. The tower will barely stay alive there. Hopefully as Machinorum tries to clear out those minions. No, it will end up going down in the end. My not taking proper aggro on those minions. Losing the tower. Meanwhile, Jiggly Duff will be taking, I believe, to be either his first or second red buff of the game. This is a nice treat for him. He is the only hope here for the side of TSM. He needs to be put everything onto him. Well, Machimon will get caught out here. No vision at all. And uh, this man is a dead man. Zero vision coming out from that side there. He will go down. Oh god. I'm back. Here we go into team fight mode for the first time properly. Mariana taking a lot of damage here. Drag is forced to run away. A nice chain all forces Santana back. He will get caught out. Will he go down? It's so close. Literally will pick up the kill. Meanwhile, Ender on Jiggly Duff. He will go down. That's the Cognon dead. That's the damage dead. Shannon getting caught by the knockout. The key missing. Not enough. As there will be a triple kill for Ander. Could be a quadra kill here as he does know where Nidalee is. He will run away, as the Italy does. Meanwhile, in the base of Team TSM, minions hammering on those Nexus Tower. 
Odin killed him. I'm like, he's gonna go down. No, he won't. A delayed quadra kill there for Ender as he keeps his teammate alive. Let me kill living on here. A few hundred health. Coming that tank that his team needs here in this double threat comp in the solo lanes. Meanwhile, Wally doing what he's been doing all game, pushing sideways, killing everything that comes near him. Should be just a few more moments now before that tower is taken. Oh, just the amount of damage one laser does to Blake there. That is not good. That's not good at all. Meanwhile, dragon number three going down here for Team CMG. Secured by Odin Kel, better than expected can be in most of his career. Falling, maybe taking double golems there. Taking raptors, they're just strangling Team TSM now. Pushing in. A Middle has there. disconnected. Um, Blake disconnected. Uh, he is rage quit. Frogger has come to NA, ladies and gentlemen, DDoSing Blake in the middle of the of this hugely important game. Meanwhile, CLG will take their first air in the review. Seems a long overview. Uh, doing a lot of damage there, of course, the as well. Instinctive knowledge of the ward there. Here we go. A push on top lane commences. The Baron of Minions, it won't be long now. Really tough. Trying to aggressively. Middle Inhibitor will be responding soon, but Ander going in for the kill. He gets the ult on the Mark of Honor. Giving out a killer very deep here. That will be two kills for none here. As TSM trying to hold off, but here comes Wally. That victor is so strong. There's one auto attack from him and Santana and the turret goes down. Middle Lane Inhibitor has respawned, but look at how
watching. Um, Wally is a god. Um, he, I believe, he ended like something like twelve one and one on Victor. Um, he carried the game pretty hard. This time it's going to be a little bit different. He is on Nar, not much of a carry champion, so much as a snowball champ. But um, we'll see how it goes. On the other side, um, Sean, aka Jiggly Duff, switched it up. He is now uh, mid lane. He will be playing Victor. Mott will be playing support, his normal role, where he can't do anything wrong, hopefully. Uh, Vol, Fionn Yasuo, Alphardras on Tristana, and X-Ray Shadow will be uh, stepping in for team number two on the Gragas jungle. On the other side, we have Odin Kill switching up for the jungle, going to ADC on that Kog'Ma, Santana, Jumping onto Nidalee. Haha, I see what you did there. Jumping. Haha. Ander. Nice. That. Well played, sir. Mid lane, Oriana. <laughs> Jada Wiggins staying to support. He will be on Jana. And of course, as I mentioned, Wale on that Nar. As we get into the game here, we're going to throw on some more music. Chill out. Chris, you can eat your food while I find something to play. <laughs> nice. I will. It is quite good. I'm not exactly. But not as good as our casting is going to be very Oh my shortly. god. That casting last game was on point, except for I was calling Blake Mott for the entire goddamn game because then we nice. both start with M. <laughs> I was losing it, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we will do is we'll throw on the music. Chris and I will be back as soon as we're loaded into game here for game number two. The LCS Community Games. Oh.
around about 10,000 gold just off of objectives in CS, so let's see if they've learned how to hit the minions when they're about to die. And while we have a gank going on, X-Ray Shadow going for a gank up at the top lane. Goes, taking a lot of damage oh, from the tower! Oh, so is X-Ray! He's gonna go down! Oh man, and here comes oh, Santana here to comes clean Santana. up the kill. Oh, this is not This good. is not going good for us, dude. Double not kill. A, a double kill up front for Lolly. The man who carried them last game is now on his way to doing the same this game. Meanwhile, mid lane farming is pretty even. Bot lane, however, not so much. Odin kill is getting bullied a bit by the nice pressure of the early game Tristana again. Of course, this new Kog'Maw, much different from the old one that these games were originally picked on, so this might not be the best pick anymore. I haven't seen a Kog'Maw in years. <laughs> it's been almost since 2015 since I saw a Kog'Maw. Oh, man. That was such a long time ago. Such a long was, time ago. It feels ago. like so long ago, Kyle. Oh, man, I don't even know how you remember that. Yeah. You know what? The only reason I do is because I have great memory and I can go back and watch things on YouTube. Thank YouTube. Thank for YouTube memory. for being <laughs> so good at also. Oh, there is a duel going on in mid lane. Will Sean come out ahead? Oh, so close. Oriana flashes away. So close. Will Sean going aggressively? No, he will run away like a. Well, I'm not like sure. Sean. I, like a Jigglypuff. <laughs> he will just sing away. Oh, oh when Dragon comes, comes in, Greg is he going to do anything? Nope, he's going to miss all of his spells and run away. Santana. Santana just away. attacking. X-Ray, of course, doing his best to kill impression. He is continuously oh. auto-attacking. Doing enough auto-attacking now where it is slow starting to do damage to the fat oh, man. Oh, man. And the fat man goes down to worry. The auto-attack from the Oriana. We'll finish off the kill. But again, four kills to zero and only a 700 uh, gold difference here. Blue team, or purple team is doing oh. a better job. Santana is now 1v1ing the Brom. Oh, Who will come ahead? Santana. The strong do man or have, the cat. Do you have no mercy? This man. Oh, oh why is he running away? Comes out. Oh, because Jiggly Duff and the are there. Sean does not rotate quick enough. Award killing a game. barely very valiant attempt by the strong man though. Yeah. Sean is still very low here and low on mana. I don't know what he expects to do here. He doesn't have his He does available. have a potion that he is not wanting to use. Oh for and some press R that press is unknown R or because just... he just dies. Wow. That was his plan all along. <laughs> Feed more gold to the Oriana. You wanted to make sure the Oriana gets a slight lead due to the late game power and ability from Victor. You know what? Surprisingly, Sean though, the surprisingly well. though, Machinor is carrying this game for the purple team here, up in CS and just dominating that bottom lane, keeping in, in, uh, keeping his team in contention here with the gold lead. But... He certainly is. This team exists this due to Moss' ability to farm well. Just can't go on for too much longer. As that kill counter rises, more and more gold will just pile up onto Team TSM here. So, as we move on into the 10 minute mark of this game, quick recap Yasuo, played by Alphadros, is leading in CS but is down two kills. To here comes the game from Santana, though, in bot lane. Yeah, not will like he he's gonna do get anything? Not he like he's not. gonna get too much done here. Just gonna clear out a ward, hopefully. Nope, he didn't even get the ward kill. A little bit of aggression here from Wally. A nice stun onto the wall. Good damage there, but he don't think he'll have enough to get the kill. Tower aggro. You're taking tower aggro. <laughs> you do not want to be hit by the tower. That does do damage. He does hit the boomerang, though. Oh no, this is not good for Wally though. Look what's coming up the river. Uh -oh. It's John and it's X-Ray. Flashes out uh, to see if we can Flashes stage. the double jump. Oh. A nice five slam. Followed by the drag assault, but that will be the kill. Jigglyduff getting that shutdown gold is nice for his team. As he does pick that up. 
he will be some big source of damage here for us coming up right here. Considering this team does have a Yasuo and a Tristana as well, it doesn't seem like that will be a problem though. Meanwhile, Makador taking a lot of damage, a double shockwave, a missed flash body slam! Oh, Tanner will go down. Do oh. Santana Shadow trying to go down, for the Santana. kills. Nice spear. He will flash away. Santana Sean gets trying, the kill. Trying to run away. Well, Xander he jukes into the bushes. Trying to try and pick up the kill on Santana. He will get oh, it, but he will end up going down in the end. That's a delayed triple kill for the Oriana there. That was a very nice gank and re-gank there from Team TSM. <laughs> The good old gank and regank never seems to fail. The old I'm gonna just leave and then pretend to leave and just come back immediately and gank you. The old the same two people that went to the wrong lane again trick. Santana has been doing quite well early on in this game. He's been providing a lot of pressure, getting some early kills. Was not a uh, strong point from this team last game. As uh, Odin Kill was the jungle, but uh, we have a last breath going on to Raleigh. Not a lot of damage though from that Yasuo right now, only on that Zeal. Now in the bottom lane, Hopkin Arm again farming away over Odin Kill here. Up all over 30, almost 30 CS here. Raleigh taking a lot of damage, doing a lot of damage in return though. Santana did an all-in attempt here, looks like from Ander and Jiggly Duff, they're going on 1v1 here. Where's the ultimate? Where's the ultimate? He ulted too late! Sean, oh, uh, Sean hesitating, up. instead of just going all-in. Oh, and here comes Gragas, oh, is he going to do here anything? Here comes X-Ray from the side. Gonna try. Oh, he misses, he misses the, ult. the ult! The shockwave comes down! Just one more auto attack, he does it! Oh man, this Ander man is on fire. Six kills, two assists. He is up almost 2,000 gold over his lane opponent right now. This is not looking good for the purple team here. This could be a quick 2-0 in the series. Let's see what happens though. We are still very early in this game. A lot could change. Comes the damage down. A lot of good poke coming in from Akamara. Auto attacks off, doing some damage. Meanwhile, Santana trying to steal away the jungle. It looks like he will get picked off. Or will he? Oh, will he? That Nidalee is so quick, and the Oriana that's really fed is helping. He's trying to go for the kill. Oh man, it's a lot is of Greg damage. Is Greg going to get anything? Enough. No, the Oriana is too strong. They have to run away. No ultimate yet from oh, Greg. Oh, he's going to find Yasuo. Oh, here comes the flank on Oriana. Is she going to go down? He got the no. oh. And then here comes Wally. The boomerang somehow misses that fat ass that is Gragas, but still, she can lead up. And X ray both very low. I wouldn't do that, Sean. The third know, auto Sean, attack. No, Sean goes down from the greed. Do oh man, that Thunderbolt with that 100% accuracy. <laughs> It's a, a big killer, especially... Works 100% of the time, 60% of the time. Works 60% of the time, it works every time. Yeah, kill taking a lot of damage here. Trying his best to put back the damage. He is down. A pickaxe to a BF sword here, though. So not a lot he can do. Janna forcing out the ult just to stay in lane. Oh god, here comes the Gragas. The tower will go down. Odin kill. why are you still here? Falling. The teleport is successful. Well, we'll see if they, they can get anything from Mr. Tor, yeah. no, oh, getting very low so here. Bad. He will go down, but that's a lot of good damage, actually, on the Margaret Orm. If Wally could jump back onto this, this could be a double kill for him here. If he just auto-attacked, just auto-attack. Oh, he lost his... Just, uh, just right-click. No, oh, now he's got to protect his channel. Mott will get away. He misses the stun. Does he get the ultimate, though? So we will pick up that kill, but a bit of a misplay there. Could have had two if he would have just hit the auto attack onto Dragon's there. Meanwhile, it's in the top lane. Alpha Drop. Getting that top tower. Probably going to take it down here. A lot of faster making. Let's see. This game, even though the kill score is amazingly team's turret has been bad destroyed. looking, the goal difference isn't as terrible. Here. 
Sean. Oh, Sean just walking into uh, certain death. Yep, there goes Sean. That Oriana already has a Zonia's completed. Going and the Frost the, Queens. Why going for the... That's amazing, going for the Frost Queen, getting all that extra gold. Let's see how much extra gold that's got. Uh, that's gotten uh, about 700 gold there, so pretty worth it, I'd say, at this point. Paying for itself. And continuing to get that active of the Twin Shadows effect. Spooky ghosts! Spooky ghosts. Let's see what the blue team decides to do. They basically have control over the entire map. Maybe looking to go for a pick on Mott. He is the only one left on his team not to die, but it looks like his time is up. It does look like certain death here. Oh, he does flash out and he gets oh, hit. Oh, Odin by the with the speed. snipe. The snipe on the ultimate there. And they will pick up the kill. They go for a dragon here. I'm surprised they haven't done this already. No dragons have been taken. Only one tower to the two of the purple team here, so they've learned from their mistakes of last game. They are doing better in the objective category, especially the CS. They're, uh, most of their lanes, except for the mid lane, obviously, are very close to the farm, so uh, a lot of damage being put on to Alphadros there. Whale taking the damage. He does not care at this point. On the auto attack. He is huge and can do what he wants. Meanwhile, Sean does pick up the kill there. On to Janna. Good kill. Running away here. No support coming in for that bomb. Oh my god. Flashing forward. Oh, just gets jumped completely by the W and also Mama Bazonius. It looks like. Ander might go down here. Oh yeah. The Drag Assault secures down. it. Raid Sean. boss finally killed. Sean secures another kill. He's up to four now. Not doing too bad here. Meanwhile, in top lane, Santana takes down that top turret. Got a push here from the team. team of CLG. It looks like they will get this mid tower, but it's an important one. It does open up the map a little bit more for them. So as we start here, the dragon will go down, but it is the full version of the blue team. But again, the fact that they're getting these objectives is working. So TSM was so far ahead. Early on in this matchup, but somehow CLG is still in it. I say that, but Boston Arm will get just spiked down. Santana looks like he could be close to the Oh, and here comes Nar. There goes Sean. Just there goes the entire Oh, wow, team. Nar. Just hanging at Turk for days. It looked he good. He just there. does not care. It looked so good there for a moment for CLG, but. Now that uh, TSM is grouped up, it is uh, looking like the inevitable is about to happen here. At 19 minutes in, with three members down, just I'm putting in great work and on that turret. there is the ridiculous Thanks. auto attack that <laughs> that uh, Kogma can put out. Kogma can do now. Oh god, Mokinor, I'm getting a little bit frisky there, trying to kill Bob Champagne. Will the inhibitor go down? It will. Will Odin go straight in place? Will. Uh, oh, you get slowed. Oh, the nice shockwave. You have three man shockwave just put down. But looks like they will just back away. The spooky ghost come out from Ander. Another spear hits on the Dragus. Everybody on the blue side is either out of now or low on health. They can't even get caught. Jada Wiggins gonna get caught out. He will get caught. Santana will live. Ander will live. Put and kill will live. They will just run away, hopefully, now. An interesting observation, too. There is. N oh, wait, no, there is an Aegis. Never mind. I was about to say, look, there's no Aegis. I think that was just there's... purchased, too. Yeah. Yep, uh... it was just purchased on Gragas. I was expecting uh, Brown to get it to Gragas, but it's still good on the Batman. But very necessary for team Oh, so Ander will probably be going down here. Another kill going on to Sean. But Mod, what are too you hand. doing, sir? Too much, too much Thanksgiving hand on that one for Mod. Alpha Ghost playing very little back here. 
Blocking third auto attack is nice. You might allow him to live here. I uh, do not think so. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> he decides to fight and die. Yep. Like a true hero. He could have just lived there. Oh, look oh, at that! Someone gets the kill, but gets killed in the process. This is not looking Meanwhile, good. Meanwhile, Santana Dude, but fails. Santana misses the jump oh, over the wow. wall. Man, that was a. That could have been another kill there. TPSM, but I don't think they really care at this point. That gold lead. I do not either. Now. Even with an 8k gold lead, it is very much showing in just how much they can accomplish, even with making mistakes. This, uh, this is not. But far has not been the perfect game from TPSM, but they are so far ahead that it doesn't really matter at this point. Santana sitting in the lane, and the enemy team's blue buff. Major items coming in. A death cap is almost completed here for the Orianna. Padma has a zeal. He will be taking down that bottom tier tower. We have insane auto attack speed. Meanwhile, on the other side, this guy should be up sword for the Asuna with Rapid Fire Cannon. And uh, almost a Bloodthirster completed for Mont on Tristana. The item disparities are not as bad, it's just that Nar and that Orianna, they are so far ahead at this point. Meanwhile, I like to steal They are food. huge. They push their R buttons together and CLG will die. CLG is already dead at this point. I believe so. Oh, uh, Sean, you are in for a world Sean, of Sean, you are in for a bulldozer. Oh, wow, okay, well, this is oh, okay. And Sean mind. is dead. And Sean is dead. A lot blown out of there, though, the... Oh, you know, the push in mid lane continues with those super minions. A lot of damage. Just from I am not attacks. sure who is who is going to take care and kill this Nar. Oh, not the tower, that's for sure. Also, I'd just like to point out Molly, a true fan of the Trinity Force Network. Building that frozen mallet onto Nar. That tribute to Adam. Adam, if you're listening, if you're watching, that one's for you, I'm sure, buddy. The frozen mallet coming out on the Nar. Helping secure those kills. While Santana being a hotshot GG esque Nidalee. Oh, Santana does land the oh, Q, though. And, and my does goodness. That, that fight. Does a lot of damage. Full AP, a lot of ages, and a rune glaive here for Santana. Man. Here comes the TP of Commander. Let's see it. He tries to attack the tower with his ball, but does not actually work. I'm not sure if he's aware of it. Meanwhile, Bottom tier 2 tower does fall as the siege of top tier 2 continues. Odin kill and Jotter Wiggins are attacking. Jiggly up here. And Sean Odin kill. Is able to do it. He Sean does get, get, the, get the, kill. the kill. 2v1 there. Meanwhile, Mock No Arm will just back off there. And as we go back to top lane now. Oh, a great ult by Wally. Great ultimate. Oh, and there it is. Yeah, the There's the alliteration of CLG. Is very real. Only oh, Sean left. The tier 2 in top will go down. Again, Dragon is available for them. Baron is available for them. A mid inhibitor is available for them. Wally getting really aggressive. And Mock just pushes him Ma back. Mock just says, nope. We don't want you in our base anymore. A lot of good damage there by Sean. He's getting some good lasers down, but not enough to win back this game, it appears. Over 20 kills in the lead are Team TSM. That is just an insane number at this point. 30 kills at 25 minutes into the game. The inhibitor does respawn, though. You never have respawn, All right, so... But they are down around 13k gold. So it is looking very, very grim for CLG. Again, even if CLG take a dragon, take a Baron, 
Doesn't look like they have much to do. TSM is just so far ahead at this point that uh, nothing they do can possibly backfire on them. Unless somehow, Ander and Wally both get caught out. But that is very unlikely. That Nar is so tanky at this point. That Oriana with so much AP can just burst at anyone. The death cap has finished. Now another needlessly large rod going in there. It was only the first dragon of the game, though, so, you know, that measly 6% damage increase to uh, attack damage and ability power. Could it be enough to put it over the edge here? Okay, never mind. Three auto attacks from Wally. Hold down to nothing. From three auto attacks from Anar. That is not good news. That is <laughs> not good news at all, Kyle. Saint Santa continues. Oh, the oh. flash out of the Ari ultimate. That's that's pretty cool. Never mind. Oh Holy my God! The Ari just comes in and just does not give a crap. Oriana getting pretty low here. But it does not matter. Wall is still alive. He's still kiting. He's still surviving. I'm doing my best, Ethan. And that's he does. Santa, you are in a little bit deep, my friend. Saint Santa does more. escape though. Those heals do so much instantly back up to half health, including the shield from Oriana. There's so much survivability out of this team. And the shield from Janna. And then the Cosmos just do whatever the Cosmos wants to do. This is not looking good. Could this be they are on the Nexus turret. Could this be the GG of game number two and series number one here? We'll find out. Top tier two tower finally goes down as the minion keep push it out. And a, and a lot of damage to that shot. Turning there. A nice dark up there for the data. And a lot of spooky goes two frost queens there on the side of TSM, so a lot of kill potential. But here comes Nar for some reason. Wally, right, gonna go down here. Getting a little too ducky. This could be uh, a bad thing here. This could be a Baron for CLG here. Like most of their members are low. It looks like they're going for it here, but a lot of vision down for TSM. They will have full sight of this, especially with Sean stepping on that trap. The Scuttlecraft control is theirs. That discretion, Sean. Uh, again, they have the time, but I don't. I don't think they have it now. Andrew is yep, back no up. longer. They had their chance. They had their but chance, but it is gone. Oh now. no, they're oh no. Uh, oh, they're trapped they're in their oh, oh, oh no. Oh my Wow. Oh. Oh. They are Mr. blowing Mr. Orig is taking all the damage. Odin kills. Oh, but Getting then really not much, 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 much Odin kill away instead of killing him. Look at that shield. He's in such little health and he's going to get away. Oh, this is a cluster of a team fight. Oh man, Odakill might get taken down. Meanwhile, back in the river. More scrums going on between Santana and Alphacos here. Nice spear lands the Q. Oh man. Oh, nice Greg is killing him with no oh, follow up. And here comes Immediately Wally. gets blown up. But Sean does kill Santana in the process. Man, Overall, this... making it 8 3 for 1. Oh, but look at the minions flooding into the main base here. They've taken both the Nexus Towers by themselves. They're pushing onto that exposed Nexus now. Only Mon and Sean really can play this out, but here comes TSM. Working our way through the jungle. Gotta kill those pink wards, that's important. Get that vision denial. Look at all the vision that was put down though by that blue buff area. I can see it all the end. that's a little bit Plenty of overkill. Oven. But they are going to essentially be watching themselves die. Yeah, this, uh... Especially with a 14k gold lead just A lot of damage on these turrets! Oh, that top tower, top and inverted tower just surviving there from the minions. Meanwhile, more super minions continue to flood into the base. That team fight would have gone so differently if Mon had not knocked back. The Kogma. 
The silly goose. Yeah, Wally sitting here on the outside of the base. And I joined up with Andrew. These two having a total of 26 of their team's 36 kills. Oh man, one more auto attack would kill Alphagos there, but he barely escaped the the rock. Meanwhile, the three man Baron, Odin killed, so team auto taking that one quite easily. So here comes the Baron empowered super minions. Not a good time if you were in the red jerseys. The poor red jerseys. Pretty much all TSM has to do is stand there, and they will win the game. But Santana is feeling like a man and deciding to split push on his own. Going for the play here, going for that top inhibitor tower. Just uh, 300 health on that. It is regening very slowly, but one or two auto attacks from Odin kill here could easily knock that down. Meanwhile. The inhibitors are respawning soon Red here. Team's turret has been destroyed. Okay. So it easily goes down. The inhibitors will be respawning bottom and top. And no longer respawning, respawning super minions. Chris, you wanna play? Or Kyle, you wanna play? Oh, thanks for yes, ruining it! <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm sorry, the game's still going, isn't it? <laughs> Way to go, Mod! Hey, Way to go, Mod! Alert. My team loses! Hey, Mud, you guys are really good at being really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're Mott, team, uh, I want we're team just step on a bit. We're not doing too good. A lot of damage going down on the Nexus here. Only three are alive. Make that two as Jigglypuff goes down in the fountain. Odin kills, spamming away on that Nexus. There it goes. GG. No, did Sean leave? He did. No. Uh, you want to join and actually play? Is there room? Yeah. You're gonna take my spot, and I'm gonna cast with, with uh, Kyle. Unless Kyle, you want to play? Yeah. Um. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm good. I think I'll. I think I'll just stay casting. It's fine. Okay. You and I'll cast. Yep. <clears throat> All right.
All Stars 2015 Team Fire versus Team Ice. We got Team One playing Team Fire, Team Ice playing Team Two. You got the matchup yet? I, I I'm trying to cycle through my tabs. Okay, there we That's go. Fine. I got it. So give me a rundown on Team Fire. I'll take Ice. Team Fire. We got in the top lane Quinn. Elise in the jungle, Brand in the mid lane, Tristana, AD Carry, and Braum support. The interesting thing about this is we actually gave the teams free leeway to mix and match the lanes should they choose. So, especially with this matchup, uh, you have Kindred, who could play in many different lanes. Jungle, AD Carry. Uh, on Team Ice, Team 2, we have Karma, Kindred, Lux, Kalista and Trundle. So. Team Ice is uh, currently captained by Odinkill, newest member to the LCS rundown, and veteran Chris Karingo. We call Karingle. him a veteran. He's not really. He's not that good at it yet. He's like the second. I guess he is technically outside of you the most veteran. <laughs> I know, which is really scary. <laughs> Like, you and me are the old folks now. I just yeah, seriously. <clears throat> well, I mean, I was there from the start, so I've always been the old folk. Yeah. I was there since, like, 31, 32, so... Which, episode 31 doesn't feel like it's that, A long like, time ago, yeah, but it long, really is. Well, even just a long time into the show, but when you think about it, four episodes is a month. Yeah. Are you coming to PAX? No. Was I supposed to? I don't know. Uh, for those of you who don't know, listening out in podcast land, I, I don't think we've announced it as a as a community yet, but we're uh, fixing to go to PAX. At least I'll be there. PAX East 2015. It's so close to you. Yeah, I live there. Yeah, I'd love to go to PAX, but, you know, Canadian import fees and such. That's right. <laughs> What's interesting about this matchup, though, is that Team Fire pretty much there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of difference that you can run in terms of lanes. We really should have switched this up, by the way. <laughs> what do you because, mean? Because Fire is blue and Ice is red. Um, oh yeah. Well, they'll switch in. The yeah, next they will match. switch next match, so it'll be fine. But yeah. Yeah, uh, Team Fire is pretty much it's pigeonholed into lanes. You can't really switch that anyway. Up Tristana. Uh, ADC, Braum, Marksman. Quinn's kind of the one, I guess that's the one open spot. You could, I guess, run Quinn ADC and try to run Tristana in mid. Or top, I guess. I don't know. It is very strange. But this, uh, Team, this Ice, was... Team Ice seems to be the one that could do this. Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to, though, looking at the summoner spells. It looks like everything's yep. going to be normal here. Except Kindred's believe... run in jungle. Yeah, Kindred's jungle, but I believe Trundle wasn't... Was Trundle top? I thought uh, Karma was the top there. Yeah, you really could go any way. You could go tr Trundle top, Trundle, uh, Trundle jungle. He's obviously going one of the lanes. You could pull a yellow star and go Trundle uh, support. Yeah, actually, that's what it's supposed to be, but it looks like the Trundle will be going top lane here. Yeah, it looks like Karma with that exhaust is going to go support for sure. Supporting uh, Kalista. Now, I just got destroyed by most of what uh, Team Ice currently is. Whale was very good, and it was exceptional. Phil is a wild card in this. Uh, yeah, crazy the, Phil, for those, those of you who know, uh, is uh, T-Force RPG. I believe he does maybe Battle Arena, I think? I think he does Battle Arena or Bronze Boot Camp or one of those, uh, those community-run you know, uh, scrim environments. Yeah, we're going to be getting into game pretty soon here, 10 seconds. But this is exciting. Uh, this is, we've done the North American finals. Uh, we still have remaining uh, both IEMs, Cologne and San Jose. We have the Worlds matchup and we have the EU finals. So we'll see where we'll take this next. Well, uh, we're just getting started here. Everybody in the chat, let's get hyped. Let's get those Kappas rolling. Get it on Twitter. Let them know that you're here. Is there anybody in chat? I'm not even looking. I uh, I had chat up. Uh, it's it's been good. Um, 
We have, how many viewers do we have right now? We have, uh, we have 11 viewers right now, more than we have for an average show. So, I mean, we're doing all right. We're into game, ladies and gentlemen. Into the loading screens. Amazingly, only two skins in this entire game. And one of them is a free skin. And so it's interesting to see here the actual skill layout in terms of rank. You've got a diamond and you've got a plat player. Uh, and, the, or, and then two golds versus a gold and three silvers and an unranked. Um, is Davy Crafty level 30? Is that, um, that was your support for last game, who was at level 30 in there, right? I think. Uh, no, he just joined up. Ah, oh, I thought one of them was at level 30 for some reason. Anyways, we are into game here. Starting up on the red side, it will be the team composition of Team Ice. Which is... Welcome Kindred in the jungle, Spring. Trundle in the top lane, Karma at support, Lux mid, and Callista at ADC. Spawning in on the blue side, you have the team composition of Team Fire, which will be Quinn in the top lane, Elise in the jungle, Brand at mid lane, Tristana at AD carry, and Braum on support. It was actually pretty hard picking out these team comps because what you ended up seeing was uh, just because of the very limited amount of patches that happened around when all of these poster matches went down. It's kind of hard to see different team comps. This was definitely one of the ones that I wanted to get done for this tournament because you had such a varied amount of play. Yeah, especially the all-star tournament always brings out the uh, the more stranger picks which is good that's what it's there for it's, it's more of a show match but hey these guys play for everything here especially our guys t-force network goes hard all the time not a lot of action when you see level one we didn't see any last game either well, just a normal start here a little gromp start from team ice Start from Team Fire as well. Odin took a lot of damage off that Gromp camp. He did. That's uh, that could be a problem. Uh, of course, Kindred yeah. not uh, not the best early game jungler. Uh, she needs a couple of levels before she really gets going, and uh, really she does need a lot of help. You can't really get that from her bottom one. Yeah, we might be looking at an execute. She's kind of pigeonholing herself in here. Yeah, really. We could be seeing Santana Ooh. from last No, game. she's good. She? I think yeah. she... Did she just pop heal? No, no she she, uh, she just had the heal passive off of her... Uh, off of her... What is it? Her W? Does her W give heal? Something in her kit gives her heal or something. Because she just does uh, not She does have that Hunter's uh, Talisman as well, which gives her a lot of uh, health and mana. Uh, so you know, in mid lane, a little bit of poking going between these two. Brand and Lux, not uh, very commonly seen mid laners now. Uh, not for a long time at least. Yeah, got a lot of damage going down bottom lane. Karma getting very low. Chris Kringler going down very low. The flash from both Callista and Moran going down here. Oh, we're Can looking we at first, first blood. blood. Who's oh! it going to go to? It's going to go to Kalista. <laughs> Is she going to get a raid? Oh, we have oh, a disconnect. And we have a DC. And oh, it's Whale again. Even even trade down bottom. Whale DC'd. We'll Shadow, see if he Shadow comes back. Getting, he's going to get picked off here. Yeah, he comes in for the execute. A lot of damage taken there, though. I don't force him back, but the kill does get picked up. It's a two for one overall. 14 fire here. Yeah, it's worth noting that that DC actually had nothing to do with the fight. We'll see if they're gonna do a remake. Whale did actually quit, so he may have just been experiencing some lag. Uh, pause is requested. I recall, uh, well, we gotta reconnect. Yeah. I recall when I tried to pause in our last game, that did not work. 
So they may just be continuing on. And oh, wait, do you see whale like, actually teleporting tops? He's so. teleporting tops. So you must have had yeah, a they may... issue, maybe a glitch or something like that. So he is back. Not too much loss there. He is quite down at CS though. Only being level. Th he is level three, but uh, only got four minion kills thus far. Not that good. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, at least trying to go for that gank. Missing the cocoon though, so nothing off it will happen there. Go for the eyes. So we'll go back to the general. Yeah, the uh, disappointing thing for uh, team, the purple team, I'm just going to call them the purple team because I forget if they're fire already. Ice. Team Ice. Uh, is that Grom actually got that kill as opposed to Tristana. She only got an assist there. So overall, uh, purple team definitely benefited off that. Team Ice. Facts. Tristana is up in the CS though, so the gold amounts for the two of them are very similar. Only 100 separating the two of them, not even that. So, uh, pretty even still here and, uh, as we move into the mid uh, part of this lane phase here. Of course, as I said before, Karma, a champion that we don't really see too much anymore. And failed clean attempt there. Mid lane taking a lot of damage. Uh, Phil putting a lot of good damage on uh, Alpha Dress. Looks like bottom lane here okay. for uh, Team Ice. They're actually going to put a move on the Elise, who's currently counter jungling. She knows she's been spotted, though, by the Callista Seeking Ward. They are not winning this lane, though, despite being kill up on their ADC. Yeah. Persona's early game has just become so uh, great with the changes and the items, with the changes of the kit. Very hard to lay against her if you don't have a nice counter. Yep, we got a gank going on mid with Elise. But the kill! Hitting on the yeah. kill there! Nice Crazy Phil there. being able to do a two-on-one. Looks like you'll be able to get out of it. A lot of damage put back as well. Ooh, and Odin kill with the support. Crazy Phil with it. Uh, nice. Unofficial double kill. So Phil starting to gain quite a lead in that mid lane. Have almost a thousand gold already over Alpha Dress, so. Despite that though, only about a six or seven hundred gold lead here for Team Ice, so not that bad. We'll see if uh, the teams go into objective focus. Last uh, couple games really haven't been that heavy on the dragon play. Uh, it's been more of a kill everything that moves kind of affair. So we'll see if that changes in this matchup, especially with these weird kind of team comps. These games are just for fun. One thing to remember. No, they're not. Everything's competitive. Not. You win or you go home and cry to your mother. Maybe that's why I'm casting now instead of playing. <laughs> Phil is really just dominating mid lane right yeah, he's, now. He's really ahead right now. Going for that uh, Frostfang really early is helping him a lot. Started yeah, dis that despite Whale's early connection issues, he's actually uh, not doing too bad in the matchup against X-Ray uh, on Quinn. Yeah, the uh, Trundle has become really strong as of late uh, with the new changes to the mastery, allowing him to get even more health back in lane. It's very hard to push him out, so uh, with his passive, with the new mastery, the new keystone that they added, uh, Trundle has become quite a good laner, and even when a situation like this where he's against a ranged champion. Yep, we got a gank coming in bottom. Coming in bottom, Kendra. Coming in for the gank, a lot of damage going out on the Baby Crockett. This player jumping away. Only kill getting dropped very yeah, low. He very hit. low. Actually, Will. Chris managed just to get off the kill. And, and the with Brommel the health and the ultimate in, coming out, we very, should expect to see. A yeah. very offensive jump there coming out from Chris as well, but nothing will come out of it. A failed gank attempt from Odin Kill ends up in a kill for the Tristana. Which is yeah, not both sides, game. both sides are very low right now. So we need to be very careful here. And here comes Elise with the gank from the side. This should be an easy double kill. And there it is, a double yep. kill for Chris. As he picks up the two very low health bottom laners of Team Ice. Not a good start here for them. 
that Tristana now has three kills and two and a half thousand gold to go back to base on. Important to note, though, the overall gold is only about uh, less than a hundred in difference. Just about a hundred in difference, actually. It's five to four in kills. No towers down yet. Uh, uh, new team trying to go for a dragon here. Fred still has some back, so he's sitting on all that gold. Maybe Crockett could go down in the dragon pit here while Older Kill tries to get the kill. He does get it. Pops the ultimate, so he will go. And Baby Crockett dying in the dragon pit. And Older Kill will go down here. Teleport coming in from Alphys as well. The help secure. Hopefully. Oh, but here comes Phil. There's that enhanced auto attack. Gets the kill onto the Elise. This is getting messy. This is. Oh, man. A lot of bounces going off there. Alphys actually gets a kill because of the uh, proximity that uh, Phil. And Ander were in there, but overall, as it being a 3 4 2 trade in favor of the Team Ice, and they do take the gold lead off of that now, up yeah. almost a thousand gold. Just about, and uh, Dragon did not go down, <laughs> despite all the action around it. Despite the four or five kills that happened, Dragon did not go down. Whale has actually caught up in CS here. So, and uh, supporting that, you've got. Uh, crazy Phil unlocks five and oh, uh, well over 20 goal or 20 CS. He is just absolutely on top of brand right now. Oh man, he even went for the Magi Soul Stealer, really trying to push that advantage he has with that item. This could get messy very soon. A Lux who is fed is a very scary thing for anybody. Our own Blake not doing too well on brand. Uh, Blake, he had a try earlier on the Oriana, not the best result from there, and now he's gone to Brand, and a similar thing is appearing to happen. Uh, in the bottom lane, now his item advantage of Pickaxe and the Epsor just to the Bilgewater Cutlass of Callista here. So a lot of damage that could be put out by that Tristana here, with those three kills. Gavin Valor. We've got Odin, though, uh, spending a lot of time up top. He's actually going to run into Blue Ace. Two of them are going to square off. That's a lot Odin. of damage by Odin kill. Yeah, that yeah. is an easy solo kill, but we're going to see X-Ray attempting to move down. It looks like he's going to give up on the attempt. Odin's paid off with his patience. He spent quite a bit of time top lane. A little bit of vision there, too. Just uh, another ward around Tribush there to spot this gank coming in from Odin kill. So what is X-Ray going to do? He looks like he's staying here. Looks like Odin Kill will not go for the gank. He'll just go for a bit of counter juggling. So X-Ray is safe for now. I'm surprised that they're not paying more attention to Phil in mid lane. He's uh, very low in health. Good on mana, but not a lot of ward coverage. They, not, they don't necessarily know that, but they have to do something to get Blake up on this matchup. And while all that happened, Blue Ace did find Odin Kill still squirming around his jumbo, taking whatever he can. So this, oh man, this could be painful. He finds it. Oh, he misses the stun as well. This could get really bad. He jumps away to the wolves, though, so it looks like he will get away. Yeah, this is Odin's jungle right now. He's going to see the attention from Blake, but he's got enough to get out. Yeah. We see Top collapsing as well. Top collapsing. Ooh, not knowing that. Oh, there's there is a dead there's a nice order. ultimate, oh, though, from the Kindreds. The turnaround. Oh, the double laser oh. coming in from <laughs> Phil. That's nice for that Magize. But this could be dangerous here. Phil yeah, we could see the... Sh oh, she'll abandon. X-Ray oh, doesn't want to risk. Oh, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Jado getting very low there from the explosive shot of Chris. Meanwhile, with the top lane, I just want to point out, at 110 CS, Whale has not backed yet this game from from his reconnect. He is sitting on 3.4k right now. And he's still got all of his potions. He's got all Although, of his potions. All there could health. be a, a bit of a miscommunication going on, because when Lux did put that pressure uh, into the uh, red side jungle, we did, or the blue side jungle, rather, we did not see Whale run down. Uh, he is going to finally back down, do his first buy, Which is instantly a buying a Borg. <laughs> oh, he, he sold it back. He went for the Frozen Heart instead, trying to play for the team. Good on him. That No, he sold that as well. Oh. I don't know what's going on with him right now. Let's 
What's he doing? What's he gonna pick? Meanwhile, we did see the bottom lane tier one tower go down after the uh, low HP of Giotto there. Oh, we see a f Iceborne Gauntlet is the first pickup here on the whale. Will he stick with that? He does. Iceborne Gauntlet and Ninja Tabby straight up teleport to the top. Meanwhile, it, that was a weird teleport to top lane as everybody seems to be fighting around Dragon Pit, so I'm not sure that was warranted. Well, it was a catch on Odin kill that uh, Phil moved down for. Him just being a little bit too aggressive ends up getting caught out. No, Phil will be safe though, damage, as long though. as he plays safe. And we saw the double. Oh man, the bot lane will go down here. Chris just nomming up all of these kills. Callista might get away here. Probably will now. Seems to be up clear. Meanwhile, Phil coming around from the side. Oh, there. Go Whoa! Ooh. The block on the laser saves his life there. A nice play from Davy Crockett knowing to block that with his uh, E. Unbreakable. But we do see Lucian finally going for the first dragon in the game. Nothing happening after that first attempt. Nearly 10 minutes ago, so. Meanwhile, we've got a lot of action going up top. Whale is going hard on X ray on. That forces a flash flash in response. Can he get the next Q off? If he does, it might be the kill. Oh, the filler. There it is. There. Oh, and Whale solos out X-Ray, nice knowing he's there. safe. Really nice use of the pillar, knocking him up and back towards himself to get that last Q off. Oh, but we got Blue Ace coming in on Elise. I don't know if he can do much, though. From level 8 to the level 11. Oh, Ooh, wow. that is a quick death. Really well played there from Blue Ace. Not taking any damage from that trundle. Odin so is going to move in. He's going to be spotted out by a ward, so Blue Ace knows he's there. Gets the stun. But a lot of damage from Odin. Yeah, very. It's going to be down. even. Oh, the ultimate goes down. This could be good for Blue Ace. He could get the execute damage off. And they, oh. Oh, they end up killing each other. All right. Alphadris was there in support. Unfortunately, no assist for him, as they did end up killing each other. Meanwhile, let's look at the CS numbers here. Whale in the top lane, about 20 CS up, but the big difference here is in the mid lane. Team's Almost Phil just doubling. taking down middle. Taking down middle turn and doubling Alpha Drus's CS here. This is the problem. That's Lux. 7 zero, zero, with 8 stacks on him, guys. Up to 60 ability power from that item alone. The majority of Team uh, Fire's power right now, Blue's side, really is an Elise. She's got quite a few kills, but I'm not too sure that that's going to translate to success. Meanwhile, seeing some action top. Lane, Whale getting a lot of nice hits in. Will nom 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 on that twin. The solo kill once again up there. Whale playing this very well. Now going for the Spectre's Cal, building into a little bit of magic resist. As that Elise is getting a little bit fed. But on um, six kills, five deaths. Not doing too much with it. Only a uh, Rune Glaive and a Seeker's Arm Guard to show for it. And of course the Source Boost. That is going to be that is going to be a hard trundle to crack late game. He can just get so tanky. And considering that really Tristana is the only person who's going to be able to put any measurable damage down on him. Yeah, the later this game goes, the worse and worse it keeps looking here for Team Fire. They do try and push up in the middle to take this tier 1 mid. A lot of damage to stun goes on the fill there. He will be forced off of it though, and they will get the tower. Yeah, they're happy to take that tower. Oh my God. goodness. Here comes the here comes the karma ballista from the side. Meanwhile, Odin still flanking as well. A lot of damage here to be put down. A nice stun goes on to Davy Card. He will go down. Meanwhile, Quinn X-ray coming in from the side, trying to get some more damage down. Won't do too much there, but she will get stunned up. Oh, that will be the end of her. A double kill coming in there. Odin kill picking up another one. That will be a four four zero. Oh, Make never mind. Up, Maybe up. even an ace. A bad jump there from Chris. He doesn't get too far away. It will Whale be. just walking in out of nowhere, able to catch up to Chris on Tristana and, and just completely just solo barely, him out. Just barely gets away there as well, thanks to resetting. Yeah, they're just going to be able to walk down this mid lane. 
And all of a sudden, that gold lead has shot up to almost 6k advantage for Team Ice here. Which is not looking too good for Team Fire. It doesn't look like they're going to get much further outside of that tower, though. They didn't have a favorable lane in bottom. Dragon's down. They will have a lot to go back for. They all have around uh, 2,000 gold from that uh, exchange to throw it back on. And as the cocoon misses there onto Jado, uh, nothing will come of that. And it looks like Tunis will back off and finally buy their items. 2,000 gold on Kalissa, 2.2 on Lux. 1600 on the Karma as well, so a lot of money for them to go and spend right now to push that advantage. It's interesting to see that nobody has gone for the, uh, what's the mini Baron Nasher there? Oh, uh, for, oh man. Killing. Play this game out. Meanwhile, we see a trade there. Odin kill, one for one with X ray. Trading over those double buffs could actually be a good thing for that Quinn. Quinn really uses those double buffs well, and, uh, we'll see how that yeah. goes out. A little too aggressive for Odin to jump in on uh, X-Ray and Blue Ace just on that blue buff. Ends up going one for one, which is maybe the best case scenario. But considering Whale is pretty much doing whatever he wants in this top lane, uh, heading down halfway through to just collect minions as they come up and... Proxy farming the top lane. About 600 HP left on that tower, so it will probably go down when this next wave shows up. Meanwhile, Team Ice setting up for Dragon number one for them. Yeah. We're going to see a, an engage with Quinn here, though, at the very least. She's here to defend the tower. We'll see how Having those double buffs whale. really will help her here. Whale well, doesn't like this, considering the teleport in from Blake. That brand about to do work. We're going to see some stuns come out. Oh, but here comes the reinforcements. Odin kill. And Phil coming in, they will clean up Blue Ace. Uh, Whale well just survives. gets to walk out of that. Odin Odin's kill doing a lot of auto attack damage. A little bit line. too much. Oh, but there is the Lux again. Instantly killing Chris. That's another stack. Up to 15. Is that 15 or is that... Tw oh my god, that's 25. That Majize is giving 145 AP right now for a $1,300 item. And X-Ray will be going down. Oh, he just barely escapes. Can he get there? Yes. Oh. Double buff finally fade, but there it is. The last cube will come out. He will go down. Meanwhile, Team Ice looking to get their first dragon of the game here in a 7,000 gold lead at just over 20. This is one of the closer games we have seen, though. Um, Team Fire's got a very long way to go in terms of their damage, but kill count wise, gold count wise, it is one of the closer ones. Uh, there's not a lot that can stop Phil, though. Yeah, just being able to solo out of Lee's pretty much 1 0 in uh, just a matter of seconds. Meanwhile, Odin, Odin kill, kill as well. getting a lot of damage down onto Chris. He will get the jump away. He should be able to survive this any boat as Odin kill backs off to the double Full Baron up. Very viable option for Team Ice. Of course, that top tower now just falling. Well, came back to me. Pushing that gold lead to almost 10,000 ahead. Team uh, Fire has absolutely no wards in their own jungle. They have a single uh, vision ward in their very close jungle, but that's pretty much it, not really revealing anything. And I don't think they can get too much vision off here. They really don't have that much control over the jungle, and it's showing here in their lack of vision. Meanwhile, it does look like a little stack up in the bottom lane here. It looks like they're going to try and siege up that tier 2 in bottom as Whale goes to work on the top tier 2. So, Yeah, we're going to actually see a pincer come in. Team Ice in some trouble. A nice stun on Odin kill. He will pop the ultimate. Meanwhile, Crazy Phil immediately blowing up the Quinn right next to Oh, that laser can do so much, and it will. A double kill! 
Don't lose those stacks! Ooh. Oh, there they go. The stacks fall away. And this is actually gonna be what looks like a pretty good cleanup here. Chris, just auto attack him. Just auto attack him, buddy. Oh my god, he's oh okay. So that didn't actually go too well. We went we saw a total four for four. Phil went down, uh, he's now sixteen and one. Meanwhile, whale up top. Oh wow, he's gonna get he's gonna get this inhibitor tower easily. He could just go for the inhibitor only. Uh, well, actually, Quinn has just respawned as well, so it looks like he will just get this tower. Oh, he will get the tower. Now he starts taking damage from it. It does survive for now. So it's pretty cute. Uh, huge here. Uh, it's nice. Meanwhile, Chris getting just absolutely destroyed here. He get chomped down by Whale. He is just so strong right now. Whale just able to walk away. That's unbelievable. The amount of health this guy gets back from just things dying around him is amazing. He walks in the face of a Quinn and a Brand. Walks up to Tristana. Tristana. Well, yeah, true. Uh, just able to completely stomp out of Tristana and then walk away. Barely get half health. After taking a lot of damage from that guy, this game is getting out of hand. Because they start to rack up the kills. It's starting to pile up as well. Just about 30 or At this point, if Team Ice gets a little too cocky and tries to go a full five on a tower, Team Fire does have the option maybe to go Baron and at least stall out to the point where they can get some more gold in their pockets. But a Team Fire can just, con or a Team Ice rather, can just continue to split push and it won't even be a problem. We see Odin kill on the top. The rest of the team moving bottom as Phil kind of farms up mid. It's no problem for them just to collect money at this point. And again, going back to the CS numbers here, only Chris is ahead of his opponent in CS here. Almost a hundred difference between Whale and Odin Kill gets a jump on Blue Ace. He Two will square off. He's getting here. a lot of damage. Oh, wow. He just missed that third party out of that. Move over there here as he jumps yeah, back. He'll take that 1v1 while the rest of the oh, team wow, fights him bottom. Oh wow, that's a lot of damage on the Davy Crockett already, just from two abilities. We get a little dance out of him. Oh man, that's a lot of damage done. Meanwhile, Odin kill will have to pop his own ultimate. X-Ray, oh wow. Okay. That's unfortunate. X-Ray dropping to Odin kill. After yeah, he was able to... Odin was able to solo out two up top. He's gonna have no problem. He'll back. I mean, he probably should continue his pressure uh, top. Whale is over in the side. Just, so, just well. about 2,000 gold, so a good thing to go by. He got, by, went, got himself a Warhammer, so a little bit more damage to over Apple. And he gets all his health and mana back, which is nice. You want to see the vision being turned out here for nice. Yeah, we see them actually starting to uh, ping Baron. Oh, wow. Okay, Phil hit a Q and an ultimate, and Blue Ace is dead. And that is probably he's really, the tankiest member of Team Fire right now. He's really risking fate here. I mean, he's staying around and putting a lot of pressure on, but I don't Dragon think they're going to be able to progress too much in. They're heading for Baron. They're heading for Baron now. Dragging up in 30 seconds as well. Team Fire does have Baron Ward. But it is Ward's just cleared out. that single uh, ward from the far sight totem. So they will clear that out pretty easily. I'm denying all of the vision here for uh, no vision at all up there in the head right now. They know what's going on. They just can't do anything to stop it. Yeah, they, there's what can you do at this point? X-Ray is going to try to pick up Dragon in response. That'll be that'll go pretty much unseen. She should be able to take that clearly. Although Whale is moving right in. There is no vision He'll just saddle for Davy Crockett, however. Yeah, it looks like... Um, looks like He's just too tanky. T-Fire will get uh, the Dragon here, hopefully. But... Oh, don't do that. <laughs> You're just baiting your teammate. We'll Oh, yeah. into the laser! <laughs> that was so close for X-Ray. He will go down to Whale in the end. 
Bell and getting this on a daily basis. Alpha Ghost yeah. does get the kill on Duel, but here comes Phil, and that's a lot of damage from that Lux. Double kill so far. Can he make it a triple? He barely gets the slow off. Looks like he will get away though, so it will be. Oh, but meanwhile, in the top lane, a huge wave of Baron minions. Ander and Jado pushing that up. Only yeah, not a lot of response. Uh, at least isn't the best in wave clear, so they're really just going to be able to take down this tower, no problem. And now Odin still takes down Min Inhibitor as well. Yeah, I think they we're seeing... The uh, towers go down. This is pretty close to the end here. Yeah. Phil's pushing down bottom lane with another huge wave of minions. This is not going to be We're seeing total base destruction at this point. The last inhibitor will fall. Double super minions to spawn here. Chris giving it his all in the last attempt. He does get the kill. On Jotto, but that will probably be it. That Orton kill goes down as well. Phil gets knocked up by Bard, so. Not Bard, Burn. Uh, Alpha Drill's getting singled out by Andler. Phil getting the kill on Elise. There is the hyper beam from Phil. Only X ray is left alive here. Interesting stat. Phil at 22, 1, and 3 has just as many kills as his enemy team. Yeah, and that just shows how dominant he has been. That Majize has been stacked, halved in stacks, and then restacked up again. He has just yeah. had that much damage. Quinn, Quinn's going to have a hard time actually clearing out this wave. She'll lose that tower and the full wave coming in. This is going to be... Uh, uh, these double super wave, super minion waves are coming in now, so this will be very hard. The respawns are coming in though, so she will be able to hold it for now, but once any member of Team Ice comes in there to help, it should be the end of it. Next are actually getting very low with those minions as well, so they will clear it out though, but here we go. Four more super minions coming into the base. The Phil is pushing down mid with two more. We actually see Will back. He does have teleport up though, so uh, not too big of a deal. He can just TP right back in. Finishes up that uh, search gaze. Finishes the giant spell. Chris just going for gold here. He knows that it's over. Sends himself. Obviously the close to guts. That's a double kill so far. Can we see any more? This way. Stopping Phil with a huge multi. Execute onto Karma there. The rest of the team clear up. Only Braum is left, and that will be the end of the game. GG game one goes to team Ice. Oops. So just in a few minutes here, we'll see the two sides switch. We'll see if uh, Fate can do anything better for team one as uh, team two goes for the team fire build. So we will be switching the teams up. We'll be getting into game again. So stick around, everybody. We'll be back as soon as we can. But for now, we're going to hit the music. We're going to take a break, go get a drink, you know, all that stuff that we need to do. So we'll be back in a few with game number two of series number two here in the T-Force LCS Rundown, LCS Replay Community Games thing that we're doing. <laughs> Just admit it. See, I gave you faith, turned your doubt into hope, and can't deny it. Now I'm all alone, and my joys turn them open. Tell me, where are you now that I need you? Where are you now? Where are you now that I need you? Couldn't find you anywhere. When you broke down, I didn't leave you. Oh. 
Band. We are into it. Game number two underway here. Fifty Band starting off. Of course, the team comps for this game will be on this red side. The team of Quinn, Elise, Brand, Tristana, and Brom. And on the blue side, we'll have Karma, Kindred, Lux, Callista, and Trundle. Or we should be. Oh no, wait, they're always switched. Aha! Nope, I got that backwards, everybody. Although, looking at the way these uh, team comps are shaping up here, I already feel like this is going to be a quick 2 0 in this series. Whale hovering over that Tristana. Fill on that brand. This could get uh, ugly pretty quickly here. All right, here we go. Chance for locking in now. We're seeing the team comps. So as we get into the three minute delay here, we can go through our team comps. Top plane, playing Quinn will be Odin kill, switching out for the jungle. Phil will be returning to the mid lane, this time on brand. Whale will be going into the jungle as Elise. Jada will remain on support as Braum. And Andrew will pick up AD carry on Tristana. 
on the purple side, representing Team Ice. We have Blue Ace in the jungle as Kindred, Alpha Dress as Karma. Uh, I'm not sure if that is support or mid. Probably going to go support Davy Crockett at the teleport, looking like a trundle top. Chris Kringler, of course, of the LCS rundown, will be on Lux in the mid lane, and X Ray Shadow will be taking on the Callista at AD Carry. The curious thing for me will be to see if they actually keep the same lanes as before. Looks like on uh, Team Fire we're going to see pretty much the same lane comp. Same with Team Ice, but you never know. The only thing is the Karma has Ignite this time instead of the Exhaust, so it makes it a little bit more clear. That actually could be a mid, a mid Karma. You never know. <clears throat> Lux taking Barrier? That could be. I'm not sure if it's that just as much as... Chris is afraid of Phil and that brand and that crazy burst potential that he has. We will see though, we are only a minute away from getting into the loading screen, getting into game number two here. Ironically, Crazy Phil in a T-Force RPG plays a magic user where he is nearly not as effective as he is in League of Legends. That does not translate well. Does not at all. So. We'll be getting into game number two here. Mont, what do you think? Is the blue side going to be too strong with the caliber of players they have? Or will the red side bring out a victory here and tie up the series? Mm. Team Fire is going to take this, no problem. Thanks for the analyst, Mont. All right, we get into game here in just 15 seconds. Into the loading screen. Game number two here of series number two. Of course, we're covering... The final team comps of Team Fire and Team Ice from last year's All Stars event. One thing is for sure, though. As we've moved into series number two here, my computer is having a real rough time maintaining a good quality stream going. Temps are rising. Tell him we, uh, I assume it's to him. Tell him we appreciate his sacrifice. Yeah, he's, uh, he's working overtime today. He's been off for a couple days, but he's getting back into the groove here. Finally in game. Here we go. Game number two. Just about to load up. Surprisingly, the same amount of skins as the last game. Not too many people playing these champions too often, it seems like. But we are into game number two. Series number two. T-Force LCS Rundown, LCS Replay Event, that's what I'm calling it now. If you're a uh, community member and you are out there listening to the stream, uh, next matchup we will be uh, dropping all of the community members that's in currently in game uh, in place for a new set. So if you're listening and you want to play, hang out, I uh, will be inviting a whole new set of people in. That is, if this game is in fact the last game of the series. I get the feeling it might be, but time will tell. <laughs> really need to work out on bouncing these teams better. Anyways, here we go. We've got a little bit of early aggression coming out from the bot lanes here. Again, we will Look. be seeing that Karma support, so uh, not too much has changed from the last matchup. Ironically on the team balancing is that this was theoretically made, and this matchup not as much. 
but this was done by people who do this for a career. <laughs> yeah, we're not that good at it. Minions have spawned. Oh, it looks like we might have a DC on our hands. Oh, whale. Whale, is whale here. again. He is by Action. items, though. He's here. We're Taking good. the jungle roll this time. Yeah, that's. it's going to be interesting to see. This man has been the star of the night. Um, he's been carrying every game he's been in so far. But it, uh, now, now going for jungle uh, as Odin moves up to top lane to take on the trundle, played by Davy Crockett. <laughs> Yeah, so interesting just... <laughs> interesting thing to note about Davy Crockett, he is actually only a summoner level 24. So let's see how he does. That is new to League of Legends. When I say new, I mean of course he's been playing for years, but it takes so long to get to level 30 that uh, he hasn't gotten to And nothing wrong with that. I mean, legal, uh, the T-Force community is one for growth as it is as much for skill. Of course, we have the Four Wars podcast, who's got all the tips and tricks to get you better at League of Legends if you're just starting out. And, of course, we have Bronze Boot Camp as well, allowing people, professionals, to cast your games, help you out, let you improve on what you've been doing. It's like good stuff going on in our community here, but lots of good stuff going on in this game as well. A lot of early poke going on in this bot lane. In fact, Andrew, can he get quite heavily poked down? The Ignite goes off. He will go down first blood going over to Team Ice. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, Odin also putting a lot of pressure on Davey early on. We may see this uh, overall level matchup really play in the favor, allowing Odin to get pretty well fed. This, uh, and this matchup does not help him out at all either. With this ranged matchup versus the melee. The, force, the flash does come out. Here comes Ooh. Blue Ace though with the gank. Oh, whale, not, whale not far behind. Blue Ace will get the kill. Blue Ace will go whale down. may be stuck. Whale actually will back off from this. Uh, Dave Crockett, I would not recommend doing that sir. That is your own statement. I'm completely fine with it. Well, we'll go down here though. Blue Ace will pick up the delayed double kill. And, uh, that will be a good start for that Kindred. That's really good for Kindred to get going early. As I said in the last game, it does take a few levels for that Kindred to get going in the jungle. So that will really help her as we move forward in this game. Yeah, a much better start than Odin had. But Odin was still able to do work on that champion. And just before five minutes in, we're up to already a thousand gold lead for Team Ice here. My eye is on Phil, though, for Team Fire. He dominated so hard on Lux. We'll see if Chris can match that skill. It's really taking a lot of damage here, but they're trading back and forth quite effectively, actually. One potion left to spell. Chris just consuming his last one. Meanwhile, down to the bottom lane. Again, more aggression. x going to be taking low here. The exhaust is going down. He may get taken out here. The stun comes through. Jada will secure the kill there. Unfortunate, as uh, that was pretty secured, so I think the Tristana could have easily taken that there. A lot of damage from Chris as well. Going down onto Phil. Not bad from him. We see a gank from Whale. Whale coming in, Flash is burned all over the place. All three Flashes are gone now. Both mid laners using theirs there, but we see Blue Ace hiding in the bushes, waiting for Whale. Which way will he come through? This is moved. It's the nice auto attack there. Let's see where. At least decides to go. Will this help out? They get the assist. Oh, the red buff should kill him. There it is. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good start for uh, Team Ice. Just having lost that first game, maybe a little bit too aggressive for Chris to stick around, considering both uh, Chris and Phil are very low on. Very low. That was close. Yeah, a lot of action going on top lane. Chris and Phil still in this mid lane. He, Chris has to back now. 
Sitting on a thousand gold, you can go back for a frost point if you wanted to. Meanwhile, Lady Crockett's still hanging around here because of that trundle passive. It does allow it to stay in lane for quite a long time at low health. And also, we see Blue Ace jumping on Whale again. Oh, the ultimate nicely dodged there, but Blue Ace will another to kill. That's a fourth kill for him already. You're looking good here for Team Ice. Yeah, now that uh, Chris has his ultimate blown, he definitely needs to go back. And it looks like he will be. Backing just before that needlessly large rod can come in. Let's see if he waits for it or if he goes for a... Uh, nope. He's going for a Forbidden Idol and an Amp Tome. Phil also starting his first back. He is up about 15 CS or so. So he is on 1400. He could get that Neilus Nula to draw first here. He's actually going to go for the Frost Fangs and a couple Doran Rings and some Vision Lords. So respecting the pressure out of the jungle, knowing Blue Ace is up 4 0. Needs to keep his hide safe. Keeping a couple, uh, giving some more health, getting some vision, and also that passive from the top frame. Knowing that this will be a very passive kind of mid lane, as there is so much pressure, that you can't really afford to be very aggressive, knowing that the race is so far ahead. I just realized I don't think we changed the. Oh no, we did. Never mind. We did change the name. Yeah, I changed it as soon as we started. Now we're starting to move into uh, the uh, middle of this landing phase here. No dragon attempts have been made, no uh, any tower pushes or anything like that. So we'll see how the teams react to this. The slower kind of game is seeming to favor Team Ice though, as they last time they just caught out, got caught out by so much aggression from, uh, from the other team. Yeah, with a, just about a 1k gold lead, we'll be interested to see if some fire can uh, come back. Going on bot lane. Jado is going to get stunned up here by the Karma. Wow, x ray. Putting a lot of damage down the red. We got Phil coming the down, kill. though. Phil coming from mid. Meanwhile, Whale is up at the top lane. Gonna kill Blue Ace. Oh, is he? Oh, man, he didn't get the kill. Oh, finally, Odin Kill gets the kill. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, oh man, Phil is here. Phil is here for the cleanup. That will do it. The tower will get the kill. Yeah. Phil will clean up that. Ends up being a three for two. Scratch that. Three. Oh, how is he still alive? Chris is probably killing himself now after that. So typical close to CLG him. move. Yeah, really. Phil will get away here, making that a three for two across the map here. But again, Team Ice is coming out ahead in these trades. They're opening up the gold lead. Their CS is looking good in all of their lanes, so this, this game could, uh, could be a longer one than the team for most of the night. Yeah, it's important to note, though, that uh, Team 2 currently playing on Team Fire. Davey uh, Crockett. He's gonna solo out Odin kill here. And Chris is gonna get the kill onto Phil as well. What is going on here? This is that's, amazing. That's sort of the one thing that you kinda have to look out for is is Phil in this matchup while wow, Blue Ace just kinda diving in the middle of nowhere. We'll have the ultimate to go down though. Oh, <laughs> he already used it already, it isn't up yet. They'll no. get a, a kill. Alpha Ghost will get a kill there. On the side. Alpha Ghost will be killed. Meanwhile, the, T the TP coming in for Baby Crockett. Both TP's coming in now. A lot of stacks on there. The Rend is just barely not enough. But the last auto attack will be. Baby Crockett once again going for a kill on Odin. Kill a nice crit there. Oh man, how does he have crit? Does he have a crit mastery or something? Because he has no crit belt at this point. Who knows what the level 24 has, but he's currently 3 and 1 and 4 to the experienced Odin kill at 1 4 and 0 oh, on Quinn. 
What I love about this is that uh, what really worked for them last time, which is still in the mid lane, is not working as well. It seems like he's not as comfortable on that brand. Or maybe he's just having a better opponent. Let's be realistic here. Alpha Dress, not the best mid laner that Team 2 has to offer here. So maybe having a better lane in the game is putting a little bit more pressure on him. And uh, because of that, he's not uh, flourishing as well. I definitely think we're going to see this game come down to a lot of objective control from the two teams. Uh, team 2, currently playing Team Ice, has a lot to prove <laughs> from their last game. Uh, not being able to do much against this matchup, but getting some early success here that can just as easily turn around. We're seeing a good use of that. Uh, oh, well, we were well, until it was <laughs> until Alphadros actually stepped out of it and died. Yeah, that was a good Kindred alt until he left. Did the Kindred alt dropped. actually affect you from turrets? I thought it didn't cover you from turrets. I will not let you die. You can still take damage, but you you still can die. Hmm. You can. Well, die. we see Whale and Odin Kill coming in there. Odin Kill does drop immediately. Whale again, so far behind. He will get the kill onto Chris, but will immediately get traded out by Blue Ace. Eight kills now for that Kindred. That is getting scary. I mean, the one factor in here that I was concerned about for. Uh, team Ice was how well they were going to be able to use that trundle, and they're actually succeeding pretty well. Uh, three, one, and four. Uh, notably different build path, going a little bit more damage based, with the basis of a Blade of the Ruin King going for Davy Croc. He's actually going to back now, so we'll see how that build plays up just a little bit more in a few seconds here. Considering how far ahead they are, I don't think that's actually quite a bad decision. Pushing the advantage on Trundle is very easy to do if you build some damage items. So he's taking advantage. I'm sure he's getting some help from his teammates here. Letting him know what he should be doing. Giving him advice. And again, I just want to point out again, no dragon objective taken by either team here. There's been plenty of opportunity to. Both teams just seem to be down here at this point. Taking a look at the wards, uh, very interesting that Team Ice has very good coverage, both of the uh, bottom river and in their enemy's jungle. Uh, Team Fire not rocking any, maybe a little overconfidence there. Yeah, this, uh, this game is starting to get out of hand with Team Fire here. Chris is going to get taken down here though, a, little bit a nice game coming in from Odin Kill, he will secure the kill there. And again, this is another opportunity. As all five members are down in the bottom half of the map, they could take go for Dragon here, but they choose not to. Wow, we see Blue Ace and Davy Crockett trying to go for a gank here onto Phil. A flat forward from Blue Ace, I don't think he was expecting Odin kill there. He's gonna stay in his ultimate. Get the kill onto Phil. Meanwhile, Whale will come in. A nice crit there. We'll get Odin kill very low, but Davy Crockett not able to secure the kill. One for one there. Trading the mid laner for the jungler. At this point, I mean, it's it's Team Ice's dragon to take. Uh, Fire does not have enough vision in that area of the map to securely take it, and with the advantage that Ice has, it's just not a safe bet. Ice is just leaving it in favor of aggression in the lanes. Exhaust burn there. Onto X-Ray, showing a little bit of aggression. Just go back to Tommy. Again, really good wards. A ping does come up from Red Team here onto the Dragon Pit, so we'll see. Yeah, we're finally getting some uh, some pings down that way from Team Ice. Looks like Kindred is on her way. Trundle plus David Crockett already being there. Looks like they will go for it as Chris moves down as well. And a lot of damage put out down onto the Tristana, so it looks like it will be Team Ice's first dragon of the game. We're seeing Phil move in on that, but not enough time. If anything, he's going to get caught out. Good amount of damage on Blue Ace, but nothing to follow it up with. This is really good to see from Team Ice as well, considering the just the beating they took last game. 
This is, uh, this is a really nice turnaround from them. I'll say that, Chris. Getting really low there. Forcing out the defensive lead. Be safe for now with Blue Ace appears to help out the game. Since we haven't seen a match go to three yet, I'll, uh, I guess I'll sort of reveal the rules here. Uh, basically, if if uh, Team Ice manages to win this match out, it will go to a coin toss between the two team captains, which currently sit at Chris and Odin. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a coin toss to see which team gets to choose uh, their side and their team comp. A lot of damage from X-Ray, an aggressive jump by Ander to push him into tower range, but he will get picked off of that. And a nice spear as well, we'll get the double kill for Team Ice's bot lane. Almost 5,000 gold in the lead now for them, just over 17 minutes into this game. No. Also, 2,700 gold on the Kindred there. As Chris does get caught up by the Cocoon. Yeah, he's got no mana. He's not going to be able to do a lot to survive other than Flash. Forces the Flash out. Good play there. Meanwhile, we kept talking about him before Davy Crockett. Pushing up his top lane really well, forcing a lot of members up there to try and get rid of it. Yeah, taking on three just by his presence. Allowing the rest of his team to go back and buy and resettle in the lane here. Speaking of, uh, only seeing the top tower down at this point. We will see more top tower fall. Say that. The caster's curse continues here. As the mid tier one does fall. And the second tower of the game for Team Ice here. And just 18 minutes in. Starting to see these builds come through already. A Blade of the Rune King and a Renan's Hurricane for that 8 2 and 0 Callista. That is getting out of hand. Now, it's not as bad as Phil's was, so we could still see a comeback in the late game, but. Now, Fierce will get caught out here. Nice Callista ultimate back. Good damage from the Lux ultimate coming in. Davy Crockett taking a lot of damage there. He will go down in the end, but so does Grom. Xander, a nice jump forward, but Blue Ace has arrived. Xander will barely escape. He's trying to run through the enemy jungle, but I don't think he will get away. A nice snipe there from Chris, and it will end up being a 3-for-3 three three trade here. Unless we see anything else, Blue Ace is going to get caught out. That will be the death of him. Big advantage actually for Team Fire. Chris being is able to go. Here, trying to go for his blue buff. This could be bad. He doesn't know they're there. He gets the cocoon stun. Oh, he is a dead man. Chris is going to go down, and that is the delayed ace for Team Fire here. Getting a little bit of light. It's a good sign for them to be able to take a fight like that. Uh, we definitely saw in game one that the skill was certainly there for them to come out victorious. Not as good of a start to start out, but they can start taking these uh, fights in the mid and the late game. That's gonna turn into a win pretty soon. And of course, right, we can start to see a little bit of a trend here from these games with the same team come starting to come up. We can see that Team Fire does have a good team fighting team. They have a lot of crowd control, they have a lot of heal. But it's just all about getting the timing off. Pocket going for a fight with Odin. Actually flashing forward, popping his ultimate. He's going to get a lot of damage down. There's the Blade of the Rune King as well. That should be the kill. Blue Ace will secure it. And a necessary flash from Odin kill. Him. I gotta say. Davy Crockett really holding up well here in this camp. And uh, that's very impressive for someone who isn't even level 30 yet. Personally, I'd love to see him go a little bit more tanky in the matchup, but I think he's doing very, very well, all things considered. As we saw in that last team fight, he did get, when he gets singled out, he can die very easily. 
Hopefully he understands how Trundle's uh, ultimate works and how his passive works, so he can uh, use that to full effect, making sure that he ults uh, the Elise or the Braum to get the most out of that. They all taking a lot of damage there. It's going to get stuck on the killer. We see a fight going on. Shadow will get taken out very quickly here by himself. A nice Callista ultimate onto two. Phil getting dangerously low here. Meanwhile, Odin kill and Whale getting singled out. Odin kill will go down here, but will he take one with him? He will not. Meanwhile, on the other side, Phil does take down our Blue Ace. Still pretty even in this. So far, two for one. A lot of damage going down on that turret. That turret will go down. A flash force out of Andrew there as well. So again, we're seeing that maybe that last team fight was just a little bit of miscommunication from Team Ice as they cleaned that one up very easy. Oh, and Phil will get taken out. A nice slow there for the red. Calista probably press getting the snipe off. And this could be an inhibitor as well. Three are up. Ice can't go too aggressive here. They've got to, they've got to yeah. temper their victories here. Dragon is up. They could go for that. They are getting the pings down on it, so it looks like they will be taking that objective. They also have a very easy bottom tower that they could be taking. Yeah, and there are pings on that tower as well, so they will be moving out towards it. Shadow Wings just gonna get caught out again. He will go down and go stuck. So will Ander. Dragon goes down. Davy Crockett gets another kill. X Ray gets another kill. Now two dragons. Four. Team Ice. None on the side of Team Fire. And also zero towers as well. Davy has his teleport available. If he had the opportunity to go top, that would be very beneficial for them at the moment. Start a split for Shadow. Another objective taken. Whale will get taken down by Chris. Again, just little skirmishes that Team Ice keep winning. Aggressive flash forward there from Ultra Dragon. He's trying to forget that he is a support at the moment. Yeah, Blake not doing too well on the Karma. And 17 to 32 kills here. 38,000 to 46,000. Zero dragon, zero turrets to the 5 and 2. Team Ice. So now where do we move into? Do we go for a mid lane push? Do we go for side lane aggression? Or do they see them try and take that Baron here? and push up one single lane or even help them with side lane pushes. Uh, I mean, despite it all, I don't think Team Fire is completely out of this yet. I mean, we saw a really effective play in the first game. I think if they can just group up and focus down objectives, they have a lot of flat gold on the map still to be claimed. So if they can get a tower or two out of the... I'll call it lack of direction out of Team Ice. They may actually be able to gain a couple of advantages here. Team Ice just not not taking advantage of their of their map position, letting fire uh, force their will onto them. Yeah, it looks like uh, Team Ice is gonna try and go for a play at the top lane here. There are three of them there. Team Fire has really taken over their ward game. Uh, they have their entire bottom side jungle entirely warded. No wards on Baron yet, which is the primary concern, but... They're at least taking some serious steps to get back into this game. They are not allowing themselves to be caught out here. To lose silly, get picked, and lose objectives like that. Although, we do see two members of Team Ice pushing the bottom lane, and none of the members of Team Fire there. Instead trying to go for a mid lane tower here, but they will get cut off, so... Jado is gonna get picked off here. And it might get as well. Baby Crockett in the front line. Blue Ace does go down, but another kill on the Odin kill in the bot lane. Meanwhile, the two remaining members of Team Ice push off the three from Team Fire, and a bottom tower goes down. 
with uh, no response really here from Team 5. Yeah, I mean, these are the little the little fights that uh, Team Ice really has to worry about. They can't let towers go down like that. Even if they are getting ahead in kills, it's just not not little trades that are going to do well for them. Man, Whale is going to get taken out. Chris might get taken out here as well if he can just avoid the problem with it. Oh, the ultimate doesn't get off in time. He will get taken down. That was a good pick up there. Xander does need some gold here. Well, has five kills, so I mean, not the worst amount, but again, Dave Rocket in that top lane, pushing down a tower. Just more and more objectives taken by Team Ice here. Yeah, I mean, that that's the split push that they really need to be focusing on. They've got such a high gold lead. It's uh, just about ten, over 10k at this point. They need to be split pushing like that. Getting fire separated. Even if it's just a bait and switch, there's still a lot that they could be doing objective wise to get towards those inhibitors. Middle and inhibitors exposed. They oh. haven't lost any towers yet. Only the base towers remain there. And again, we haven't really been seeing them try and focus on one objective. It's been side lane manipulation has been focusing down those towers when nobody from team fire is there so they are winning out in these little mind game situations here team ice pinging baron as well wondering they didn't have any vision of it there for a second so they might have been wondering if team fire was on it Alphadros taking a lot of damage there actually gets moved out by his own pillar of ice that will get Kill. Bill will pick up the kill on that one. And Davy Crockett actually popping his ultimate there on the prong. He is going in on this. He has started to build tank. He does have a Spectre's Calibus to him, but it's not that much. He gets put in. Davy Crockett will go down. A nice ultimate there from Chris. And Davy Crockett going down this too far. A nice flash away from the cube. And that will be it. A 4 for 2 in the end, including that original pick on Alphago. So, really, a 4 for 1 in that team fight. Not enough to go for Baron, but Dragon is up at this point. They can either choose to get the inhibitor or retreat for the Dragon. Looks like they're going inhibitor. It does look like inhibitor. They could easily get this. Only kill is alive for another 10 or 15 seconds before anybody with some damage could help him here. So they will take the inhibitor, and they do start beating the dragon, so it looks like they will take that as well. Meanwhile... Yeah, between Callista and Injured, they should be able to get that down pretty fast if that's what their objective is. Finally, the first tower of the game goes down to Team Ice here, so... Is it too late? Over 10,000 gold lead now for Team Fire. For team Ice, I should say, so... And Ice is gonna go ahead and wrap up that dragon kill. That's their third dragon. Fire currently has none. Only 10 more minutes until they can possibly get that fifth dragon going. Baron is uh, still four. up on the map. What's the respawn time? Is it 6 minutes or 5 minutes for dragon? Oh, good call. Uh, I don't actually know. Hashtag, hashtag bad casting. Yeah. Hashtag we know nothing. Hashtag I don't play this game. But here we go. Starting to group around that Baron Pit again. This is uh, what led to that inhibitor being opened up in the Team Fire base. So I'm not sure they want to really try anything here. They're just trying to get a little bit of vision down. But as Team Ice spots this, they surely will just come out and uh, clear all of that vision to stand out. Meanwhile, Davy Crockett going hard on Andrew here. Odin kill gonna get taken out. A nice ultimate there from Chris in the back line. Callista ultimate going down as well. Kindred ultimate going down, saving Blue Ace's life. That's three down for none so far. And it looks like... I don't know why Team Ice is still pushing. They could just easily go for Baron here. They will get another one. Alpha just barely surviving. They can just go for the game at this point. Yeah, you got about a 25 second kill timer on those. Odin's gonna be back up in 20. 
We're not going to see Andrew on the field. Of the field. Of the field. Of the field. We'll get executed. No minions there to help him. Oh, Chris is in the back line. He's going to try and get some damage off. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. Meanwhile, Davy Crockett on those Nexus turrets, just He's bashing him down. Game. He's going for it. Odin Kill is back and alive. Oh man, Chris missing the ultimate there. He will go down for that. So they get the two Nexus towers, but not the game yet. As the respawns start to come in. Davy Crockett taking a lot of damage there. He's got a lot of life steal as well, but he will get stunned up and taken down. Meanwhile, X-Ray, this Callista on 17 kills can do so much, so much hiding. Actually, this hit by the broadcast of there will be taken out because of that. A triple kill for Odin Kill keeps Team Fire in this game with an ace. You can't ignore the fact, though, that they no longer have any Nexus Towers. They do only have the one inhibitor down, and that will be up pretty quickly, but they are exposed. A good time. Team Fire may consider Baron at this point, actually. They're trying to check for wards. They are in the clear. Blue Ace is there over the wall. Team Fire now. starts Baron. They do Could see be seeing a Dignitas as well. Oh, a the ultimate nice ultimate from Chris. Chris. That will Just enough to Jado level up will damage and actually get the down. kill on Jado. Yeah, this isn't looking too good now. The respawns have come in. Oh, Chris and, lands. Uh, the, oh, he doesn't get the auto attack off, though. Whale trying to force back onto him now. Hermit is there to stop it. Davey can take this right now with Chris and Ander being as low as they are. Oh, he's gonna. Is he gonna try and go for the kill? Oh.
Where'd you get that body from? Yeah, team two, team two led by Chris uh, won the coin toss and opted to keep their same winning comp. No surprise there. Nope, you're welcome. Stay. Stay a while and listen. Well, we saw in the top lane is Trundle do a very dominant performance despite a DC. It'll be interesting to see if she, or he, she now on Quinn, uh, if he can continue that on Quinn. Well, we'll see how it goes. Game number three. We are in the loading screen. Teams loading in. Of course, on the blue side, we have the team comp of Team Fire, Odin Kill in the jungle, Crazy Phil back on Brand in the mid lane, Whale now taking over Quinn in the top lane, Jado returning to Braum support, and Ander back on Tristana. And on the red side, we have Alpha Juris on Karma, Blue Ace back on Kindred, Chris, the team captain, the winner of the coin toss on Lux. We have X-Ray on Callista and Davy Crockett on Trundle. By far the most surprising result of the last match was him on Trundle pulling out a huge, huge amount of pressure just by himself. Welcome to We're seeing a lot of pings here in the bottom river. We may see some early action. That is five members of Team Fire in that bottom jungle. If you spotted early though, they kill the ward. 30 seconds until minions spawn. Let's see what happens here. Chris has not left the platform yet, nor bot. Uh oh. Could this be it? Could this be the recent? Team Ice loses. Their captain. Oh, he is back. Here we go. Everybody is in. We are good to go. Minions like have spawned. After that early aggression, everything is going to return to normal here. Chris will make it back in time for minions to spawn. Until you fight for it. We'll have a Grump and Krugs start for each team here. Meanwhile, Whale and Davy Crockett get up in the top lane. This is the lane I want to focus on a lot. Top lane. Now that Whale is in, instead of Odin Kill, how does that change the dynamic here between these two players? If Davy can keep up the level of play that he had last time, they'll do fine. It'll all depend on how aggressive Whale gets. If it's anything like what we've seen from the past with him, that could be quite a lot of aggression. Go for the Level one, they're going for it here. Davy Crockett winning out, forcing the flash out of Whale. Oh my God, he got the stun. That he got first blood. blood. To the level twenty-four, Davy Crockett Davey showing Crockett. his mastery on that champion. That was I'm actually very impressed by the ward placement right into the bush. Knowing he was going for the protection of that, uh, preemptively grabbing the vision there. Man, this guy. 
Look out, level 30. David Crockett's coming. Look out, placement matches. Seeing some aggression out of uh, Crazy Phil in the mid lane, taking Chris down to half, forcing him into some potions. Already using all of his potions, yeah, this is going to be rough for Chris for the next few minutes here before he can go back to bot lane. He's damage traded there in bot lane. The enhanced Q from Karma there doing a bit more AoE damage. I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't see the swab come out for action in the bottom lane. X-ray getting very low. Finger as well. The flash would come out. That'll be a kill for the Callista as well. Ignite going down onto Jado. He will get away though. Oh, but here comes Odin. Odin shows up. Oh man, he's getting very low. He could go down here. Oh, he just barely gets it off. But Karma gets the kill again. Oh, but now Blue Ace is on Phil. Phil will go down. Action up in the middle lane as well. Uh, Crazy Phil going down to the Blue Apron and Chris combo. Oh man, Alphadros also gonna get the kill on Ajato here if he can just get another couple auto attacks. Oh, he just gets away there. No mana for Q, even with that blue buff that he nearly had. Man, a lot of action, a lot of early kills here for Team Ice. This isn't looking good for Team Fire. Well, it is early on. We'll see. It is very, very early. We could see that top lane matchup shift. We'll see how Dana Crockett decides to build this matchup as well. Against, you know, going up against that better player. He's, he's already he's losing. He's already going to go down. Well, taking the solo kill. So... What I was trying to say is, will we see Davy Pip switch up his build here? Will we go for a more tanky build this time instead of that heavy lifesteal, heavy attack speed build that he had last game? One thing I noticed about Whale in comparison to Davy Crockett was his positioning in the lane and how he handled CS. Whale knowing that his range would allow him to uh, keep Davy Crockett out from farming and using that that range early on didn't give him too much of a benefit. He ended up going down to first blood, but now that he's got all of his abilities in, he's able to actually keep a good distance and put a decent amount of damage on Davy. Davy's gonna have to react and play a little bit more passively. We do see a vamp scepter as his first item, so it looks like he's gonna be going towards that blade of the rune thing as his first item again. Yeah, not he's not actually even reacting to Blue Ace's catch out of Odin kill up in the top lane there. Uh, opportunity a, lost. Yeah, that could have been an easy kill security. Uh, getting him back into that lane would be huge. I'm very surprised we haven't seen too much action around Harold. I'm very interested to see how this. Uh, plays out in the actual LCS to see if we end up seeing a lot of uh, play around the Herald and seeing that as an opportunity objective as we saw early dragons go or if that just falls by the wayside like it has been in these early games I'm not sure the the way that these games have played out they've been really you know kill focused and team fighting based not much objective play but I'm sure once we see the professionals uh, that will change well, Odin kill goes lane. down his own jungle Odin kills going down Jado also goes down in the bot lane as well so that's two more kills picked up for team ice across the map here and even Phil is losing to Chris in CS. This is not going good early for Team, I or team Fire. Nice pillar going on to Will there. Moody Crocker popping his ultimate. He's got the slow of the Q. He's got that health regening, but let's see if he can force Whale up here. He's hiding in that bush. He doesn't see it. Oh, man. Here we go. That's a nice setup from Davy Crockett. That will be a kill secure for Blue Ace. And another kill going to Team Ice. Will Odin actually catch up Blue Ace here? It all depends on how the damage is going to come down. Oh, but... Blue Ace Blue fighting Ace so inside of his wolf's range there. That's so much extra damage. A nice solo kill there from Blue Ace. Odin kill yeah. getting picked out again. 4-0 right now. 
Another Not a lot great only start. has that uh, Warhammer bot, but it's doing work for him already. Another great start for Shaman Kindred. Seems to be really comfortable in this champion. Meanwhile, Chris is going to get taken down here in the mid lane if he's not careful. The ultimate does come out, though, from Kindred to save him there. Yeah, that barrier would have had it as well, though. A little needless. Not that Kindred needs it at this point. She's 4 0. Not got a lot to worry about her other lanes. Bottom lane's pushing in quite nicely against the Tristana Brahm. Top lane's holding his own. Blue Ace is actually going to make a move on Phil here. Not a lot of mana and help out of Chris, but it's not going to matter. Oh, the stun does go down, though, from Phil. So it doesn't look like Blue Ace will be able to continue that aggression. More damage coming down in the bot lane. Jado taking a lot of damage there. The Ballista ult comes down. The Ignite's put down onto the Brom. But Alphagirus is taking a lot of damage. X-Ray then takes the Brom passive. He's going to get stunned up here. It's a low health. With Odin coming the in, this should be a pretty clear Meanwhile, clear in the mid lane, Whale does keep down Chris. And X-Ray goes down. That's a nice 3 for 0 for Team Fire there. Odin's aggressive. Odin's aggressing. David Crackout, rather. Yeah, Davey trying to get onto Whale, but he can't. Blue Ace was not there in time to help support him. Like I said, that three kill pickup there for Team Fire, putting them back in this game. Only a thousand gold down now, three kills behind. The CS is looking good on all of their members, only behind or ahead by quite a few, actually. I mean, what was the real problem for uh, Team Fire last game was the fact that not a lot of the fights were centralized. You didn't see a lot of actual team fight fighting going on as opposed to just small skirmishes on the side. But the fact that we've got Kindred who just flashed in <laughs> and was able to take out Whale, no problem. You've got Kindred and you've got a Callista both being able uh, to take down towers so quickly. Yeah, the I think it took almost 30 minutes for them to for Team Fire to get their first tower last game. So let's see if they can. And that, with that was primarily by minions, mostly by yeah, chance. Just getting lucky on one side wave, and that's what got them their only tower of that game before they lost it. So. See if they can put a little bit more pressure on the objectives. Again, Dragon not being a focus here so far. Just one vision ward for each team in that river. One in the lower brush, and one in tri bush there. Rebuff being transferred over to Phil. The first tower of the game trying to go down. Barely getting it. How much life is on that tower? That's in 20. Oh man, that's in double digits. That's 20 health left on that tower. One more auto attack. Would have done it. Meanwhile, Whale. Whale going aggressive. Whale's going aggressive. It's no not going to pay off for him. Oh my goodness, a one. What? Oh, he barely makes it out. Wow, the 5% HP back from that Get kill him got him out of it. No ultimate. Oh wow, Damn, Crockett had his ultimate available. I'm not sure if he didn't have enough mana or what, but he did not use his ultimate, did not get that health back. Really hurt him out there. Meanwhile, the bottom lane. Giotto getting pinned out once again. And Chris is going to go down in the mid lane here. Meanwhile, a push from Team Ice onto this bottom tower. Looking like they're going to take this down. Luis going really aggressive. He is going to get that kill on Team... Actually, I don't secures the kill. But it will be this bottom tower for them. And could very well be a dragon. There is a ping on to it. Odin Kill does catch out X-Ray with a stun, but... Oh no. Blue Ace, you're very low, buddy. You gotta leave. Now Whale is here. Oh! A nice Kindred Ultimate, though. We'll keep him alive. At least Odin Kill, do not leave that! Oh, man. Odin Kill gets taken out. Whale trying to pick off some kills here. Never X-Ray needs to get out of there. He's very low. He does get stone. He is going to go 
down? Where is he going? Yeah. I think he could have gotten out of that. I don't know why he went back. Whale going hyper oh, aggressive. Oh man, yeah, he's going way aggressive here. If Chris hits the laser, <laughs> which he dies, there's the hyper beam. It was super effective. I mean, look at how good Davy Crockett's doing right now. He's got top lane completely pushed to his tower. He's now in mid lane, pushing up that action. Bottom tower is likely to go down here. Unless they can... Yeah, they clear out the minions, so that tower is not going to go down anytime soon. Yeah, they don't have a lot of power on that, though. Not With a lot Phil of it, straight auto-attack damage, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Phil and Ander being there at full health. Only supported by Jado, that's that's a lot of pressure. But meanwhile, Davy's taken mid. He's gonna lose this uh, wave pretty quickly, but he's got one not too far behind him. Whale does come in though, he will clear out the tower. Looks like he's gonna fight. The ultimate comes down from Davy. Oh, the Blade of the Ruin King pass it. Oh man, he's so close. Oh, he's still coming in though. Oh, he actually dodges the, the cocoon there. But it looks like he will get taken out here with one final Q from Elise. Not even the auto attack is taking him down there. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane. Alpha is still not going back from that original aggression, so he's still on pretty low health here. But Blue yeah. Ace is coming around from the side. They should have saw him there. He cleared the ward, so this should be... Yeah, team is going way too aggressive bottom. I mean, they're way too low to keep up where they are. Meanwhile, Phil gonna get all oh, just barely dodging out on the laser. And it Anders should be able to clear this up pretty well. Should be, but he's gonna get taken down. Will oh John my god! There. Oh no, Kindred ultimate coming down, and he died because of that. Not sure if there was just a lack of mana there or what, but this should be cleaned up pretty well by Whale and by Odin Kill. Never There's mind. There's just a real lack of. Of synergy coming out of Team Fire oh, right now. Oh, X-Ray gets stunned up by Phil. Just barely doesn't get that kill. Meanwhile, Chris, you're very low. That's a triple kill for Whale. I mean, that's it, there's a, a major gold discrepancy right now, and that's going to help. But once we see some of these towers go down, we should see that even out quite a bit. That was a pretty big win for Team Ice. Oh, Phil. David Crockett finally going to get this tower in the mid lane. That's really important. The bottom Red tier one is going to go down as well, though, so trade again. Red teams These teams are destroyed. very close this game, Lon, as we had over 15 minutes. Yeah, only about a 1.2k gold lead as well for uh, Team Ice. Let's see if they finally go for that dragon aggression. Blue Ace is there. He puts down a ward, but does not start the dragon. I think a lack of vision really is hurting them here. Only one member close, and that's the support. Jada's gonna get caught out again. Yeah, Fair flash. And a wasted ultimate. Not a good spot for him to be in. The hyper beam does come out of Chris, but again, that's such a short cooldown on that ultimate. It's not the worst thing in the world. Meanwhile, Blue Ace gonna get off here by Phil. The ultimate gonna save him here. Chris is going to take down Anders. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, Whale did take down Davy Crockett, so... Yeah, we're starting to see that item advantage. The fact that uh, Whale is seven kills up to Davy's one uh, really start to come up. This is where the rest of the team needs to inform Davy that he needs to be split pushing. He needs to be using that uh, trundle to their advantage. Get his uh, overall farm up. We well, do him. see a change here from Davy. He is going for the Warden's Mill, likely going to go into either that Frozen Mallet or that Randuin's Omen to try and stop the damage out for the Wind. Meanwhile, in the river here, Oni still take it down very low. Chris aggressively flashing forward here. Daughter will get taken down again. Teleport also comes in for Davy Crockett. Ghost will pick up that kill. And the dragon does seem to be getting started here for Team Ice, the first one of the game, as Davy and Alphadros zone out the rest of Team Fire. Uh, as I say, that Alphadros will get picked off by the cocoon. Poor Blake. Poor Blake gets taken out. But that is Dragon Secure, dragon number one of the game for Team Ice. 
Chris actually could kill Phil. He does. He gets the kill on him. Losing about half his health in the process, but that is very important. Meanwhile, Davy Crockett finds Ander here. Really ignoring him as he tries to come around him, but now... Oh, that was a nice jump there from Ander. Very aggressive. Uh, Davy Crockett is so aggressive there. Blue Ace gets caught up. Whale trying to go for the damage on her. Davy Crockett still taking the damage. He finally backs off a heal coming in. Will save his life. Chris will get a nice kill onto Odin Kill. And another one onto Whale soon. I'm nice very move. impressed that Davey made it out of that in one piece. No. This Trundle man chugging the potions and a nice shield from the Karma. Uh, no, not the Karma. No, What's the Karma? Karma? Something shield or healed him. It might have been uh, it was a It was a summoner heal. Summoner <laughs> heal from X Way. A nice tier 2 bottom tower pickup. And they do spot Anders here. He could be in a lot of trouble. Not so fair. One thing both of these teams are totally willing to do is go in regardless of their health levels. Yeah, they are very much committing to fights here. This is uber aggression coming out from these teams here. <laughs> Even out of the supports. <laughs> Even Blake. Man, this guy does not know how to let off the gas. We must attend to other matters. Here comes Whale. He will get stunned up by Chris there. So no more again. It is a 4k gold lead in favor of Team Ice. And again, just as we thought that Team Fire was coming back at this, Team Ice pulled another advantage out of another team fight here, another team fight here. They're starting to pull a tight gold lead. They're starting to pick up little advantages here. You know, if Fire can actually slow the game down and start having these fights go on their terms and have them be wholehearted team fights, I think we're going to see quite a bit out of them. They've got the gold in the right places. They've got a Quinn that's pretty decently fed. Brand's not too bad, but compared to Chris, not the best off. The one asset that they don't really have that uh, Team Fire, or uh, Ice Rider, does not have in place is the trunk. He's just not to where the team was in the previous game. Oh, wow. Blue Ace gets taken down there. Meanwhile, Whale and Phil both get taken extremely low there. You see the jungler go down for Team Ice. That means no more aggression. Baron has just spawned. No more Rift Herald. Again, we're going to see a four-man push in the mid lane. And again, this is the problem we're seeing with this team comp. The fact that this Trundle is here just makes it so much harder for Team Fire to push their advantages. He's such a team. Just to be able to go in and go now. And I say that as he dies, actually. And so will X-Ray. He will get taken out. Chris Pringler is extremely low. The Flash from Anders will go down, but Phil will get the kill in the end. And that's a three for one trade there for Team Fire. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the Trundle just isn't there. He's building, beginning to build a little bit of tankiness. But at this point, he doesn't have any boots or magic resist. So you've got Brand and Elise damage going in pretty heavy. If he can't be oh, Blue Ace gets caught out again in that front nice line, that Warden's Mail is useless. Another mid tower goes down here. Man, only a hundred gold separate these two teams. 21 minutes into the game, number three. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a game. We have a series. What separates these two teams right now primarily is a single tower and a single dragon, both in favor of Team Ice. We can say the other part of it that's made up is basically in CS. Odin is up almost 30 over Blue Ace. The whale is, of course, uh, up almost 50 on to Baby Crockett here. So, this is. Uh, that's what I make after gold. Ander is pretty far behind compared to uh, Callista and X Ray. But keep in mind that. Tristana is a late game champion, so if she can get those couple of clutch items and not get completely caught out, 
by Blake, uh, she'll be able to do just fine in the late game, despite the discrepancy. We're starting to see these fights break out into more actual team fights, as opposed to the random skirmishes we saw in the past. Yeah, these teams are a lot more grouped this game. Try and stick together, not trying to get caught out. Always sticking in groups of two, having a buddy with you really helps out. For those of you listening at home, uh, both teams are in full communication with each other. We're using uh, TeamSpeak, the Trinity Force TeamSpeak. Uh, to have these two teams together, so they are communicating. It's just a whether or not it's effective or not is the question. Chris, we caught out here. Off the result of a lot of damage to the target. Him tanked up a bit. He's forced to flash away. Did he get absolutely blown up? But, oh, the Kindred ult saving Tristana there. Oh, and man. That's a double kill. For, that's, that's a triple a, kill. That could be... Nearly a quadra. And a forced flash away from Blue Ace. He's going for it here. It's very close. And Phil will take that away. Scumbag Team Phil takes away the quadra kill. Team but Fire does pick up the ace. They're going to take Dragon. The gold is shifted in their favor. Is this the turning point? That was a 5 for 0 ace. They're now 2k gold up. Could this, this be is the, the end? This is the skill of their group showing out here they didn't have the best uh respect i'd say in their first matchup on this particular comp for the other team and i think now they're now that they've been able to not have as bad of an early game and they're able to start grouping up in these mid game to late game fights we're starting to see their skill really come through yeah the real difference here almost three thousand gold Whale is ahead of Davy Crockett right now. The impact that these two are having is just, as you can see. Oh wow! Whale's gonna get taken down by a nice hyper beam by Chris there. Hard to say how that would have gone without that uh, beam from Lux coming in, that dropping was very their ultimate. close. I don't know, is hyper beam what that's called? No, it's called Final Spark. I just call it hyper beam. Cause it's crap in Pokemon, so it might as well be good in League of Legends. Um, Odin getting some uh, good vision around this Baron. I feel like this is gonna be the next big contested objective. We do see though five team members Ice. of Team Ice here. Team Ice has not had the best uh, team fight at this point. They need to lock in good Baron Vision to be able to catch the Mountain Lifts. Both teams, Both teams taking their are buffs. posturing. Yeah, they're really setting up for this. There is going to be a brawl here. Both teams trying to poke through. Many of these team fights have started on a single catch, and that's what we're waiting for. Davey's going back. He does have his teleport up, though, so he can use that. Alpha Dross is also going back here. Again, with these new home guards after 20 minutes here, it does make it a little bit easier for you to back and help defend in these middle tier towers. Team Fire is pushing up, but they have no minion wave in sight. They need to either retreat and set up for Baron. Or let's choose another objective, but with the way they're posturing and with whale uh, farming in the jungle, this is not going to net them any major benefit. They're still trying to push up here. A very good wave clear team is this team ice team, so. Both sides really have pretty decent wave clear. You've got Tristana, you've got Brand. More pings going onto the Baron Pit. Very small amounts of vision here for Team Ice in that river area. Yeah. We're starting to see Whale's split push, uh, and <laughs> Ice is very quick to respond. Yeah. Sending two with Whale going around the other way. He's not going to get caught out by this. We'll see Alpha Dress there, but 
It's actually brilliant because that shift of attention allows Team Fire to go ahead and push right up mid. Oh, that's a flash. David Rocket's gonna go very low, very quick. He's gonna go low. Whale will go down. Whale is gonna go down here. Alpha just secures that kill there. But meanwhile, three not that healthy members of Team Ice are trying to defend this tower. Baby Crockett gonna take a lot of damage. He could go down to the burn here. Forcing here. out the Kindred Ultimate. But Just here comes that sure bottom lane. Here they come. I feel this a nice flash in. A nice bomb ultimate actually pushes them back. Shadow oh, will get taken down. Oh, oh, the catch goes on to Phil. The miscue from Alpha Grass Fight will end up going down. Everybody survives thanks to that shielding and healing from Lux and Karma there, so. That's, uh, that's three dead from Team Ice, or Team Fire, sorry. This is such a different game from what we've seen in the past, because it's really coming down to these team fights. Both sides are pretty evenly matched up. Another tower goes down for Team Ice here. And again, they take the gold leaf back. It's now a thousand gold in their favor. Oh, but Blue Ace could get caught out here. Yes, he will. One auto attack. Shanks him out. Oh, he's looking for it. Whale and X-Ray going at it here. Who's going to win this duel? Oh, wow. man, the crits from Whale. Too much. No rend even being procked there from the Callista. And that's a huge pickup. The AD carry, one of the highest gold members of this team, is down right now for about 30 seconds. Gives Team Fire some time to set up. For this Baron. Get some more vision down. They don't start it though. Spooky ghost going on. I think at this point, the two sides are too evenly matched for either one to take Baron. You've got superior ward coverage out of Team Fire, but I think they prioritize towers at this point. Another tower does go down there. Fire taking me back now with that. They're pushing onto this mid air inhibitor tower. Everybody is back alive though now, so Callista comes back in. But we don't have Whale with the rest of the team. Forcing them to back up. Another Braum ultimate coming up. Shada will get taken down. Once again, Kirby! There it goes. Just taking a little bit longer. Again. Trinal Ultimate comes down, but it goes on to Andrew, the AD carry. Not a very good target for that. Oh man. They can continue to push down this middle lane as long as they all stay healthy. The Hyper Beam just barely misses there from Chris, so. No kill on to Andrews. They know where they are, though. They do have some vision on them. Looks like they're opting to go for Dragon if they can. It's a good call from them. They aren't tied up in dragons, so getting that advantage is key here. This will be the damage to minions and monsters, so it will help with that tower siege. It will help with that tower defense as well. And yeah, there's nothing for Team Fire to do in response. All their waves are pushed in, at least to mid lane. If a little bit of jungle, that whale can kind of clean up, but it's not quite enough to make it worth the loss of the dragon. Doesn't do too much for them in the short run, but in the long run, it's going to end up costing them. Oh man, maybe Crockett going in here. I don't think he can fight this. Yeah, his anyway. confidence is a little shaken, I think, but he's completely caught out. Oh, he's forced to flash away under the tower here. He does have some teammates on his way. Oh man, Whale, you are way too far out of position. That's a huge Whale pickup. Oh, but X-Ray gets caught! That's huge for them. Getting that kill onto the AD carry, onto the most fed player. Let's get caught, take some more damage here. Blue Ace is here to clean up the kill onto Odin Kill. I'll do that. Two members go down to the one for Team Ice. And again, just 600 gold between these two teams. This is very close here. 32 minutes into the game. We've started to see a lot of the uh, fights start to come up in Team Ice's jungle, though. Team Fire is able to go on the on the offensive here. Uh, 
As the death timers get longer and longer, we are going to start to see it get to the point where a team fight or two is going to start uh, resulting, rather than in the stalemates we've been seeing now, it's going to start resulting in objectives. and Davy Crockett here. They have to be careful. Another big ultimate burned here. Oh man. What was that? He just suicided into the team. We call that a double lift. Focus. Here. They need to be pushing together at this point. Whale can't be going back down into the jungle to start making moves. They need to push this tower together. They'll group up now, but... Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Red team's turn now. Team Fire will pull out. I think they could have maybe spent just a little bit more time in the base, but they're going to pull out clean. Bear now becomes so pivotal as all of Team Ice is starting to respawn. That is a 15, 8, and 8 Quinn right there. This might be it. That's the ace. That could very well be it. That's a clean ace. 20, second, 20 seconds until X-Ray comes up. They don't need it. They can just swap out uh, tower damage. Minions arriving now. 10 seconds until X-Ray comes up as of right now. They're going to get two inhibitors at the very, very least. Red team's inhibitor has been destroyed. The other inhibitors instead of the Nexus towers. Red team's inhibitor has been destroyed. They're going to pull out. I don't see any pings towards Baron. They may just leave this where it lies. Four out of the five members have over a thousand years. So I think it's going to be okay. Never mind. No, he's going to kill everything. Why does his team not be in no, actually, the rest of the team is actually going to go ahead and take Baron. Very pivotal moment. Uh, we may see... Wow, well, it's not even going to attempt to go back. 
He's just gonna catch right into blue. Oh, oh. blue didn't stand a chance. Well, finally gets shut down. I guess the good thing for Team Ice right now is the fact that uh, Team Fire was not around to give Baron empowered minions out to the lanes that are currently pressuring. We've got a lot. We got a big minion wave coming bottom that uh, Team Fire is going to have to lose. Team Ice is going to have to clean up. Fire is going to take down. A little bit of a pause in the action now as both teams reset quite a bit here. Waiting for Whale to come up. That's really, I think, when Team Fire will move out. That man is carrying them so hard. He's already on six items. He has a bit too built up. And he's on over a thousand gold. He is at full build. I'm stopping this quick now. There has to be a stun again. There has to be some sort of knockdown or something to get him out. We're seeing Team uh, Fire put a lot of pressure down on the bottom lane. They're going to get that tower. Most of Team Ice is there to mash, but we have a very fast Quinn moving to the middle lane. My god, Whale is on fire as he moves up. He is going straight for X-Ray. In their base, diving under two towers. He'll get the kill. Flash, My and god. Was there as well. Oh man. Red team's turret has been destroyed. 10 HP, not even close. That's that's gotta be game. So guys, that was it. Series number two goes to game three, and it is over. So we're gonna reset here. If you want to play in these games, get into the chat channel T Force in game. We'll get you invited. We'll get you in these games. I'm not sure what the next series is gonna be, but it should be fun. Now we're just gonna take a few minutes of break here. We're gonna play some more music. We will be back with series number five here on Force LCS Rundowns LCS Replay Community Event. I'm out for the night. Okay. Have a good night now. Thanks for the work. Okay. down. There we go. Alright guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, ton of fun playing with everybody tonight. I am out. Um, Odin, Chris, if you guys want to hang around. Keep yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, how many people do we have now? Uh, just go, go. Are you in the T Force like group channel? Sort of. Chris. Sort of. Chris. All right, like the, right, like the, the lead, the channel chat. Uh, 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 
get in that get just ask people there. And that's how we're going to yeah, be on I'm on. I'm on. Yeah. So just start it. I will leave it. I will leave it. You, you are the leader, my friend. All right, guys. All right, guys. Uh, ton, of uh, fun. ton of fun. We'll do something like this again soon. Uh, Phil, see you Tuesday. Yep. Yep. Whatever you do. Monday. No, Tuesday's RPG. Phil, crazy Phil.